Uh, 7.01, we'll get the council meeting for November 16th started. Would someone from council be willing to read the acknowledgement? Councilor Wayne. Today, I acknowledge that the town of Bruderham is located on Treaty 6 territory and the homeland of the Métis Nation of Alberta. The town of Bruderheim honors the first peoples of this land. We recognize that we stand upon land that carries the footsteps of Cree, Métis, Blackfoot, amongst other nations who have been here for thousands of years. Therefore, the town of Bruderheim has an inherent responsibility to foster healthier, healthier relationships with first peoples and further the calls to action as outlined by the Truth and Reconciliation Commission. Thank you, Councillor Wayne. So we call this meeting to order at 7.01 p.m. Is there any additions, deletions, or changes to the agenda? Nothing from admin, Mr. Mayor. Anything from council? Okay, um, be looking for a motion to adopt the agenda as presented. Uh, Councillor Dana? I motion we adopt the agenda as presented. Thank you for that motion. Any comments, questions, or concerns from council with the adoption of the agenda? Haven't heard none. Call for a vote. Anyone opposed to the motion? And the motion's carried. So now we're looking for a motion to adopt the minutes from November 2nd. Did someone come from council? Deputy Mayor? I make a motion that we adopt the minutes of November 22nd, 2022, regular meeting of council. Thank you for that motion. Any comments, questions, or concerns? Everybody's had a chance to read the minutes from November 2nd. Hearing none, call for a vote. Anyone opposed to the motion? And the motion to adopt the minutes is carried. So we can move on to the council priorities now, and we'll start with information requests and start with Councillor George. Nothing at this time. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor George. Uh, Councillor Ashley. I just want to add that I attended the Bruderheim School Council meeting on November 1st. That was missed in our uh, council package. And again, they're just so grateful for help with the swimming lessons. Um, and that I also attended the Elk Island uh, Wild U15 game on Sunday afternoon. Uh, the stands were packed and the concession was very busy. You couldn't even find parking outside. Um, yeah, it was really good hockey. I encourage uh, our counselors maybe to go catch one of the games. Um, it's Verderheim team with Lamont merged together to make a new hockey association. Hopefully it's a prosperous and long lasting one. Um, grab some fries, go cheer on our local youth, show them that we support them. Well, that's great, Councilor Ashley. I um, appreciate the update. If, if you want to in the future, when we get to the council committee reports, then you could uh, add those in at that time, but thank you for that update. Um, where can a person see a schedule of those games so they know when they're playing, then we, have better heads up to try to catch some of those games. Okay. They're they're on a, they're on you have to go onto the website to the league's website and um, look at it from there. Um, is there a way to print off? There is probably is a way to print it off. I can print it off and leave it at the arena somehow on the court board. Um, kind of game uh, upcoming games, but. Unless they go to the website and pick the, the team that they want to see, that's really the only okay. Way. So they don't post it on Facebook or anything like that. Uh, the odd one might be, but um, no, not really. Okay, thank you for that. Appreciate that. Um, any other information requests, Councillor Ashley? Uh, Councillor Wayne? Just a couple, actually, just two. Just is the um, skate park going to be closed off for the winter or is that going to be open for people to go and no? Okay. Mr. Mayor, through Councillor Lecco, no, it'll be closed off for the winter. And uh, the reason is we're starting the playground. Uh, our playground equipment finally came in, so it'll be being stored there. And it'll be dangerous for people to be in there because it won't be secured to the ground, right? Oh, so, okay. Yeah. Oh, thank you. And the disc golf, is that is that staying up for the winter? Is that going to be coming? Yeah? Okay. Yeah, we're going to leave it up. up. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Wayne. Councillor Leonard? Nothing at this time. Councillor Dana? Not today, thank you. Nothing today, sorry. Deputy Mayor Judy. A uh, couple things, or one thing in particular. Um, library, did we do any research on that library board and how we can enhance it to make it a little bit better? Or have you got anything for us? Uh, uh, Deputy Mayor to um, Councillor Carter, do you have any updates on that? I know we reached out to the board, but we haven't got anything back. Um, we haven't had a meeting in a month or so um, with everyone being sick and everything, and there's not very 
many members, um, there was interest of one person uh, coming aboard. But um, again, we didn't, we haven't had a meeting, so I'm not sure what the process is on that. They were going to, um, they had the table at the What's Up in Berderheim, and then um, was it on the utility bill? Yeah, and um, and that. Oh, pardon. Okay, thank you for that. So let's look at the, can we relook at the bylaw and, and see if we can open it up to more residents? Um, and I'm thinking outside the town. Is that possible? What, what's, the, what's the wording and the thinking about that? Because that might help us get some more volunteers to support that board. Yeah, Ms. Ms. Mr. Mayor, through Deputy Mayor, we were going to look at, there's a couple of things, there's Libraries Act and then there's the Northern Lights, right? So uh, we were, yeah, that's definitely on our radar to kind of see what the legislative reasoning for the bylaw is. Because I know we made our bylaw that uh, mirrors those by that bylaw and that legislation. So, but we will for sure look into that. Can I just add something? Um, it's not just uh, to have members. It's people who want to be members, but they don't necessarily want to hold a title like treasurer or something, a big commitment. So that's the trouble trying to find someone who wants to hold a role like that, because those are the roles that are empty right now. Thank you for that. Anything else, uh, Deputy Mayor? That's everything, thanks. Okay, um, and then going in reverse order for program requests. Any program requests, Deputy Mayor Judy? Wondering if or how we can do a needs assessment for uh, daycare. And why I bring that up is I've had someone say that they would show interest in putting a daycare in, but how do we know what the needs are and if it would make it or not? So it could be, it, it's a for-profit that's, I'm talking to, so um, I don't know, is there some kind of a form, format, something? I don't know. I do know that there's grants out for that kind of stuff for nonprofits, so but not necessarily for profit. Uh, Mr. Mayor to Deputy Mayor, I'll look back in, uh, we did a quite a bit of work back in 2014, 2015. Um, I'll just, if you let me, I'll look back on that and, and see what we can come up with. Uh, thank you for the question, Deputy Mayor Judy. That was an excellent question. We heard that the other day from a resident uh, that uh, concern about the daycare before school and after school. And um, we've heard the comment also about daycare that some folks are choosing to send their children to Fort Saskatchewan because the time frame that the children spend extra hour on the bus in the morning and in the evening helps out with their um, child care issues because then the mom can be home before the kids get home and still have a job so um that there's definitely sounds like an issue with daycare in town um Councilor Ashley you wanted to add into that at the Bruderheim school council meeting um they're actually looking into um a before and after school program it's it's just um discussion right now but they're definitely looking into the licensing and what has to happen to have that happen so that's very interesting because it's uh, been in the school before and it'll be interesting to see where that goes thank you for that anything else on program requests deputy mayor no, mr mayor can i just ask councilor carter which group was looking into that friends of bruderheim or the school council uh the bruderheim school council okay thank you Thank you. Councillor Dana? Nothing at this time. Councillor Leonard? Nothing at this time. Councillor Wayne? Nothing at this time. Councillor Ashley? Um, if we could possibly look into um, adding some public skating or shinny, maybe if we uh, could look at following the school schedule, this would get the kids out more, socializing, exercising, um, if that's possible, if we could look into that. Mr. Mayor, through Council Carter, yes, we can. We can bring that back to Council, the cost. Thank you. Thanks, uh, Council Ashley. So you're thinking like when school ends at 3.30 or whatever uh, on that time frame on the weekdays? Um, so for example, um, fall break just happened. Um, so in Fort Saskatchewan, the Dow Center, uh, Harbor Pool, they have more times open, uh, more shinny public skating because the kids are home more, uh, something like that. Um, or um, 
on early out days, if we had public skating, the kids could go public skating after school, just something like that, just a thought. Yeah, that's a great idea. And that's uh, it opens up more communication between the town and the school and what they're doing, and how it might have implicate towards the arena. So thanks. Anything else, Councillor Ashley? Uh, Councillor George? Nothing at this time. Okay, thank you. Um, so now we can move on to the next page. Um, request for decisions bylaw 10-2022, the utility bylaw. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Administration like to provide council with an updated utility bylaw for 2022. That town council gives second reading to bylaw 10-2022, the utility bylaw. Council previously approved utility bylaw 08-2020. This bylaw was to be reviewed and administration determined some changes were required. Strategic plan areas create and maintain responsible infrastructure and development. The updates to this bylaw outline the process for determining if the town or the customer is responsible for the costs associated with the utilities that are needed for repair. Built, building a safe and energetic community. This bylaw provides guidance on the use and control of all public waterworks and sewage disposal works within the boundaries of the town. Pursuing excellence and leadership. This bylaw sets out the terms, costs, and charges upon which services will be provided. Other impacts, legend legal, bylaw 08 2020, the utility bylaw. In summary, the new bylaw contains the same information as the previous bylaw with the following changes. Section 2.61 changed the word bi monthly to monthly, added section 3.65 to section 3.67 inclusive. This information was added to provide guidance on determining who is responsible when the sanitary sewer mains become blocked. The utility bylaw 10-2022 will be placed on the Town of Bruderheim website upon third reading of council. We've attached the bylaw, Mr. Mayor, and um, last meeting, uh, the Director of Infrastructure Services wasn't here, so um, that's why we're only doing the second reading, to give council an opportunity to um, address those questions from last time. Thank you very much. So we're looking for a motion from council to give the second reading to the bylaw for the utilities. Deputy Mayor Judy. I make a motion that town council give second reading to bylaw 10 2022, the utility bylaw. Thank you for that motion. Any comments, questions, or concerns from council with that motion? Deputy Mayor. <clears throat> so I read over what you had highlighted and the changes and stuff. My only question is if when we are cleaning the sewer lines for some reason, so there's no blockage, but we're cleaning the sewer lines for some reason, and they tend to back go backwards into somebody's place because those sewer lines are directly in front of their house. How do we handle those kind of situations? Mr. Mayor, through to Deputy Mayor. So the easiest way to answer that is most municipalities have backflow prevention and or the new bylaws state that all new housing will have a backflow preventer put in their drains. Um, a majority of the homes in this in this town, they do not have backflow prevention other than West Woodlands and Brookside. There's a great deal of new housing that does have that. Um, it's it's an unfortunate thing that if it does happen, it, it's it's very rare that it happens because the laterals is what we call them, the laterals that leave the home to the main are very long. They're usually between 60 and 80 feet. So it's very rare that would make it make its way back. Something uh, I did a little different this year is I used a lower pressure with a different nozzle um, with our contractors. And I never received one complaint for uh, anything going back into a home. So more of a learning curve for us to see what pressures we had to shoot at. Um, also, in our new development bylaws, you it is required to have a backflow prevention uh, device in the sanitary sewer in the house. Go ahead, Deputy Mayor. I appreciate that. And yeah, they are cold now. The question is, if it does happen, because somebody pushed too much pressure, what's the alternative? And I guess what I'm specifically looking for, there's probably maybe three, four homes that I've heard about that are that close enough to a main that it might make a difference or to where you're flushing, it might make a difference. Could we be maybe proactive and offer them the cost of getting those back bell valves into those homes so we don't have that problem coming back? Because it's a cost, right? And if it back blows and hits them, it could be 10, 15, 20 thousand dollars for the damage in the basement, right? So that's that's my question because I don't see it answered in this bylaw particularly. That's why I'm asking. 
So, Mr. Mayor, through your Deputy Mayor, I, I think, again, to answer that question, I, I think the towns were very uh, cognizant of responsibility when it comes to something like that. So if it was it was if it was a, something that shot back into the homeowner's toilet or what have you in the basement, um, in the past we've taken responsibility for that. We would take it responsibility in the future. As far as sharing costs, um, I don't believe that would even be cost prohibitive. Um, you're looking at jackhammering out um, the basement, putting in a back pull vention valve. It's a very expensive cost. Um, I wouldn't have a number for you. Each house would be unique, um, depending on where the sanitary sewer lines are. Um, but again, the rarity of this happening, going back into a home is a rarity and we would take responsibility if indeed that happened. Um, again, when we did this five years ago, I think one, one or maybe two homes, um, and it was very minor. We went in, we cleaned up and the homeowner was very happy. So. Uh, go ahead, Deputy Mayor, and we'll let you continue this line of questioning. And so as I'm, so I'm, I'm reading it, it says, should the problem coexist on private property in between the main and the property line, the town shall, in its sole discretion, determine a fair portion of the cost of the deposit and repair between the town and customer. So that's kind of what I'm getting at, right? It's not a clear wording. If we cause the problem, doesn't matter what it costs, we should be repairing it, not sharing it with the homeowner. That's kind of what I'm getting at, right? And again, so to answer your question originally, we would be responsible for that, but not in terms of putting a backflow prevention valve in. If we shot it back into the home, there's there has to be a reasonable response from the town, and that would be the reasonable response is that we would we would take ownership of what happened. Um, we're talking about just water, though. We're not talking about something that can do a lot of damage. It's it's more of a again in, in the one or two homes that were up in I believe they were in Brookside. Um, we just bubbled the toilet a bit and we went in, we cleaned, we disinfected. It's something that we would we would do. Um, the homes that do have backflow prevention valves, that wouldn't happen. So so I know it's not in writing, Deputy Mayor, but there is a responsibility that I think we, we all share um, if that happens. And uh, it would be something that we would look at on an individual basis. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Uh, Councillor George. With that being said, what happens if there is a sag in that line on from the from the property, homeowner's property line to the dump line? And that sag becomes solidified. Whose responsibility is it then to repair that? Mr. Mayor, through the Councillor Campbell. So a sag in the lateral line going out to the main yes. sewer line is what you're asking. Um, again, <clears throat> I've been doing this a long time. I haven't I haven't seen that too often. And if it was there, it would be pre-existing over a long, long, long period of time. We're talking about eight feet down. If it was recently put in, um, let's say a new home was built and the line sagged, we would go back to the developer because obviously they didn't use proper backfill or proper compaction something we would determine at the time of them installing that sanitary sewer line. Um, I, I think I know where you're going with this is some of the older homes that they start to sag, whose responsibility is it? Um, again, we, we can't determine this line we're sagging. We can't determine which lines are sagging. We'd have to camera each individual lateral line in everybody's, uh, in every property. So it's very hard to determine that. But that can be determined at the time of plugage. Y yes and no. So if there's a plug, it's not going to be from a saggy line. And if it was, it would be something that would be already pre-existing and we would have heard about it. I, I, I've honestly never heard of anybody having that issue yet. And I think in the time I've been here now, I've had maybe 15 homes um, plug off on sanitary sewer lines, and it's been mostly caused from them. Um, and I think we went oh, back good. a few years ago, sanitary wipes, um, what have you. So uh, again, I would I would caution how we say that sag line because it would be pre-existing and sag lines typically wouldn't cause a plugage. Um, it, it just wouldn't it would have to be completely collapsed. There was one home, I believe that was partially collapsed, but that was pre-existing from 15 years ago. So 
Another question. How much tile line have we got in services? About 70% of the town is clay the, tile. That's the old town? Yes, that's 70% of the town is clay tile. The other 30 is HD PVC. And that starts to deteriorate who's... Well, again, it's don't, it's what was used back in the day. Um, unfortunately, I didn't make the product back then. So it's clay tile is pretty versatile. Um, I've seen some homes in the neighborhood of 90, 100 years old that it looks as good as it did when we put it in or when they put it in. That so, depends on the ground. And it does depend on the ground. It depends if there's trees there. It depends on the type of material, is the soil acidic, et cetera, et cetera. Um, clay tile is very fragile um, when working with it, but as long as it's not disturbed, it's... The longevity is is but if it does to start to deteriorate it would be the homeowner's responsibility to the all the way to the main. i would say in that case we would look to property line um because it's not a plug it's just a if the line it actually deteriorates outside the property line then it's connected to ours i would say that's a different case versus plugging and the whole but if, I can just be, the, if i can just be kind of open here the whole point of this was to try to get some control of plug sewage lines that were in the, by no fault the towns, but the pre-existing bylaw, it's becoming a cost burden to us when it isn't our fault there, that these lines are plugging. We, uh, listening to the conversation, I find that our bylaw has a lot of gray areas. And I'm not saying that it doesn't. I think every bylaw, doesn't matter what it is, has a gray area. But I think this when is the start. Asking people to pay for things, it should be cut and dry. Mm -hmm. So, George, um, the gray areas that you're talking about, can you give a specific to size just, what the one I you're just, talking about? just talked about one with the tile. Um, blockage is sagging. Uh, those are the kinds of things. Those are gray areas. Um, well, how do we determine? Who pays for what? Um, I'm going to go one step further. We have two types of um, sewer line connections. We got a bump, a, draw, a draw, dump, top dump, and we got a side dump. Side dump is another one that can block a lot easier than a top dump, dump when you're flushing. No. Mr. Mayor, if I can just add. But anyway. If I can just add something for clarity on bylaws too, it's a great point, but that's why we get legal counsel and insurance. So the insurance adjusters, I have to say, are pretty amazing. And they look into all of the case history. They look into the property. They look into the bylaws. They look into the provincial legislation, which we're mandated by. We don't make this stuff up, right? <laughs> There's things in our bylaws that have to be in there. And so we've had a number of claims over the years. And sometimes they rule on the side of the homeowner. We have insurance for that. Sometimes they rule on our side. And that's what the insurance adjuster is for and the legal uh, team, right? So um, Mr. Thomas has right. A lot of our bylaws, there are bylaws that we have that are a cost to the homeowner. Absolutely, there is. There's a lot of them. And, and everybody has a right to challenge a bylaw. And But as far as anything that's related to insurance, the adjusters do a really good job. And it's no different if somebody sued you personally, right? The insurance companies take care of it for us. So our job is to make sure that our bylaws are as close as we can get them and we do a lot of research on other bylaws that are out there we vet them by the lawyers by the people the insurance people and then they make suggestions and we bring those back so um i don't think you're ever going to have a law or a bylaw that can't be challenged i i would be shocked to find one that couldn't be challenged but um this was our best um take on it with the advice of the people that we pay to give us advice so nothing more thanks Councillor george Good discussion. Um, Deputy Mayor Judy. Just one more question. Do we have a camera that can go down the sewer and scope stuff? No, we do not. No. Um, just as a heads up, uh, as part of our infrastructure grant that we got, our infrastructure study, excuse me, we'll actually have a camera crew out here next week doing Old Town, which is the town, which is the section of town I flushed this year, and we'll now be cameraing it. And it's part of our assessment to determine the longevity and, and the condition of that line. Yeah, I think we'd be very interested to hear the results of that report. Thank you. Any other questions from council? Um, I have a couple of things. First of all, I'd like to say a uh, pretty cool beard there, Mr. Tomashat. I'm glad to hear you're feeling better. Um, I thought that the meter reads for the residential was done every month, but now I'm seeing that it's changing to every month now. 
Mr. Mayor, just the wording in the bylaw. The wording in the bylaw said by month, by monthly. It's monthly. Yes, correct. Yeah, but yeah. I, I thought it was monthly already. It, it, it is. Yeah. I just okay. To so it's just correcting what was there. Okay. Yeah. Um. Uh. Sit back and relax. I got a couple of questions on the offenses and fines that uh, I'm a little confused on. So, <clears throat> in the offenses and fines, um, the 2.1.7, the very first one, it says. Uh, install, test, remove, repair, replace, or disconnect part of water system without authorization. And the fine is $200. If we're doing cost recovery, I don't believe $200 cuts it, does it? Mr. Mayor, this is fines on top of cost recovery. Ah, okay. That's good. I didn't, didn't realize that. So then um, the um, 2.1.1, point seven and two point six point seven aren't those two the same like interfere with tamper with isn't that the same as remove repair or replace or disconnect without authorization those two sound the same uh, kind of sort of but it basically what it's on two point six point seven it has more reference to an RF if you tamper with a radio frequency is what it's getting at so operate a remote reading device without authorization. So there has been cases that people have had some devices that can tamper with our reading and offset that reading. And that's what that's making reference to. So okay. operate a remote reading device without, without authorization. Okay, because the, the meter reader uh, machine would be part of the water system. So that's why I took it like that, but that's fair enough. And then 2.3.1, it says use of water from town's water system without authorization. It says $200. And then uh, down a little further, it says extend service pipe from one lot to another lot is, is a thousand dollars. If you're tampering with the water system without authorization, aren't those two? Shouldn't those two fines be the same, like a thousand dollars instead of just two hundred dollars? So they're individual cases, Mr. Mayor. Um, let's just start with two point two point five. Extend service pipe from one lot to another lot. Yep. That's actually illegal under uh, Alberta environment. You cannot tie in one service to another. So that indicates that as a separate entity, 2.2.5. The use water from town's water system without authorization is in terms of taking water without a water meter and or if they didn't take out a development permit for construction, which we have, you can get a, a flat fee for construction water. Yeah, that's what that would make reference to, Mr. Mayor. Okay. Yeah, I just thought maybe if you stiffen the fine, then, but that, that was that was the question. And then uh, 2.11, it says... Um, or sorry, no, uh, the connect alternate water source to the town's water system. That's pretty dangerous, isn't it? Because right. you could be uh, adding, uh, if their pressure in the system dropped and you had water going backwards, you could contaminate somebody else's water. So that one's only a hundred dollar fine. Shouldn't that be a higher fine to try to deter someone from, because I'm thinking of like a farmer when he's filling up his uh, tank with uh <clears throat> mixing with chemicals and then something goes wrong with the water system and then it runs back into the house that's pretty dangerous right so mr mayor 2.2 point disconnect alternate water source to town's water system that's more in reference to uh i think if council some of the council remembers when we when i came here we found a few properties with wells on them they did not have backflow prevention valves in there so we had them disconnected and away from that because there was no means of ensuring the integrity and safety of the water should that well back feed into the system. Mm -hmm. That's what that makes reference to, Mr. Mayor. Sure. Yeah, I understand that. But I was thinking of more along the lines of a tank that because we do have some rural properties now, right? The rural sure. properties are we do have a backflow prevention valve that stops it from getting into our main distribution system. So at the vault that we put in um, a couple of years ago, there is backflow prevention there. So um, in specific, the Brutaheim Water Co-op cannot backfeed into our main distribution line. Okay, yeah, but I, I was thinking again of, of the single farmer and say if something in the town water system drops the water pressure and someone has got a tank hooked up and the water flows backwards into the system, which could happen, there's no water prevent, backflow preventer at that guy's house to stop that from happening. And I can't honestly answer that. I don't know what each individual residence has for backflow prevention. I understand your question. Yeah. Um, there is a possibility of that. Yes, of course. Yeah. Um, that's why I was thinking maybe the fine should be a little stiffer. That's all. So if, if I may on the fine, this yep. is where this comes into a fine line. We 
So the cisterns, we're going to use the Brunei Water Co-op. Those cisterns are actually not um, the town's responsibility. Our responsibility ends at the CC. So I went through this with Alberta Environment, with a fine tooth comb. I've had many discussions over it and more so about the chlorine levels in those tanks. And I think we can all remember that discussion. And it was a concern that the chlorine levels are very low in those cisterns um, due to the size of cisterns and the low usage. Alberta Environment said, as long as we've tested up to that CC, which is part of the distribution line, our, our, our uh, chain of custody, it ends there. So if something happens to that property um, and it back feeds into that system, it would be an individual thing. The rare, that is a very big rarity. That's why the fine's only $100. Alberta Environment would be involved after that point, not us. So that fine would be more from, than $100 from Alberta Environment. Sure. Yeah, but, uh, I was thinking again of our rural residents, not the ones on the water co-op, but that because they're they're in the town. Pardon me? Mr. Mayor, we don't have any rural residents hooked to our system. <laughs> no, I, I, I realize that, but they still fall under the town's rules for the water, no? If it was new development and we had a water line there, they'd have to conform to our development bylaws. Okay, correct. but if they're not hooked to the town water, then they can do whatever they want in their own home. Correct. Okay, just wanted to clarify that. Um, the next question I got is 2.5.3 and 2.3.2. How are those two different? Because prevent or hinder access to water system and impede access to water system sounds like the same thing to me. Could you repeat those numbers? 2.5.3 and 2.3.2C. Oh, yeah, one says prevent or hinder access to water system. The other one says impede access to water system. They both have a $100 fine. Oh, 2.5.3. Yep. C. Yep. CC, one's a CC. So one's the, the CC and one is the main line. So it's it's two different services. Okay, where does it tell you that one's a, for a CC? So on 2.3.2, obstruct or impede access to a CC valve. Okay, so maybe we should put that in brackets or something because... That's so. Oh, okay. You the section, that's like, oh, yeah. okay. So you got to read the section that it applies to. Okay, that's correct. Thank you. Um, and two point nine point one. What what are you what are we talking about wasting of water? Because as I come down to a personal opinion, like somebody's washing off their quad, and maybe and their neighbor thinks that's a waste of water. Like, what what defines a wasting of water? So if uh, Mr. Mayor, if a resident only knows he has a water leak, um, or a very bad water leak in his house uh, to a degree of let's say 10 it could be any amount of cubic meters but a, a very gross uh, a loss of water and they're doing nothing about it that's where we can step in and say that's a loss of water um more so if it's before the meter we would never know it we wouldn't be able to account for it we'd have to account for it over at the water plant which um in the last three days i've had two substantial line breaks service line breaks um, so in the neighborhood of 140 cubic meters of water loss. So that's where this comes into play, oh, wasting okay. of water. So then who pays for that? If it's... the homeowner would play for that. Okay. Or but if we don't catch it, then the town is paying for that extra water being Well, used. we'll end up paying for it to the commission until we recover that cost from the homeowner. Okay. Okay. Mr. Mayor, that kind of falls in with the responsibility of a homeowner to have somebody checking their house. So if nobody's checking your house, there's responsibility. So it's a fine on top of the loss. Okay, thank you. And then uh, the, the last one that I've got a question on is about uh, the um, tampering of or removal of sewer manhole covers, 3.1.5. Um, there, there's another one that says unauthorized tampering of town sewer system. Isn't that the same thing? 3.1.5 and 3.1.6. So in 3.1.5, that's manhole specific, Mr. Mayor, mm -hmm. um, unauthorized tampering of town sewer system. That could be um, as our sanitary sewer dump station uh, messing around with that, with just a drain or what have you. One specific to uh, manhole, the other one is specific to, 
to could be catch basins or okay. or sewers. Yeah, no, I, I was just wanted to ask because it sounds like the same thing. Like a sewer manhole cover is part of the system, right? So that, that's why I wanted to ask that question. And then um, the unauthorized connection to town sewer, it says two hundred dollars. Um, but the improper disposal of construction waste on development sites is a thousand. Would wouldn't they they shouldn't they both be a thousand dollars if you got unauthorized connection to a town sewer? And then the improper disposal. It, it sounds to me like the the same kind of issue because you could be dumping all kinds of chemicals that are bad for the lagoons. So, Mr. Mayor, uh, so one has to do with fluid sewer system. Um, so if you're uh, we use Chevy Chase Christmas vacation sitting there dumping a sewer mm -hmm. into a manhole. Okay, that's unauthorized dumping of the sanitary sewer. Um, improper disposal of construction waste, that is refuse. So more so uh, landfill items. Okay, yeah. that's not related to the sewer. That's right. Okay. Thank you. That is all the question. I, I know we updated everything all in this portion, but I wasn't sure that the fines and that was looked at. So. Thank you. I appreciate you taking the time. Any other questions, uh, Councillor George? A failure to maintain clearance around the fire hydrant or fire uh, hydrant insula, uh, isolation valve. Um, is that like with uh, obstruction with a vehicle or is it the snow removal or if it's on the corner of your lot or? So, Mr. Mayor, through Councillor Campbell, that would be probably all of the above that you've mentioned. So you can't put a bus shelter right on top of it. You can't ignore that the fire hydrant becomes buried within the snow. You can't put shrubs all around it, which would impede the fire department from getting to it. So lots of what you just said, absolutely. As far as the highway on the roads, that's highways, that would become a, a traffic ticket. If you were parked in front of it, you shouldn't be. And I have another one, and Carl touched on it a little bit about a disposal of uh, of uh, chemical waste into the sewer. I don't see anything really about that. Mr. Mayor, through Council Campbell, of course, those incidents would be provincial and federal legislation. So they would be dealt with through the law? Absolutely, the absolutely. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor George, anything else? Um, I, I guess I missed one in my notes here in my scribbling. So the one that deals with the uh, fire hydrant, uh, unauthorized use of the uh, unauthorized operation of town water system. No, uh, unauthorized use of water from a hydrant. If someone opens a hydrant too fast, you can bust the thing, right? And, and it costs you maybe $10,000 to dig it up and fix it, but the fine is only $200. Is, is that applicable? Mr. Mayor, the only ones that can open up a hydrant would be the fire department and or public works unless somebody wants to go out and buy the $500 tool, which I don't think that is, is relevant. Um, in terms of operating the fire hydrant improperly, it, it, again, it falls back to the education of the fire department members and also public works. So I think the pines represented fairly well because they're not going to be able to access that hydrant. Hydrants are not charged, so it's not like the movies where you hit the hydrant and water sprays all over. So it doesn't work like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I just thought I'd ask a question. Thank you. Okay, um, any other questions from council? And call for a vote. Anyone opposed to the motion? And the motion's carried. So we can move on to the next item on the agenda, which is uh, 8.2 2022 interim operating recommended budget council brief. Mr. Mayor, would you just give me a minute, please? Thank you for all those answers and all the good questions. If I close my mail, I lose my. If 
Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Apologize for that delay. No worries. Um, just sharing this with public, uh, the budget information. Thank you. So, Mr. Mayor, I'd like to start with the council brief. So, the, per the proposed 2023 municipal budget requires a 5.4% tax revenue increase to deliver a balanced and fiscally responsible operating budget. There we go. <laughs> Um, that reflects the programs and services that are required to meet current resident business and industry needs, aligns to council strategic priorities, retains fiscal sustainability in both in the short and long term. This proposal manages RCMP cost increases, loss of revenue at the Carol Mushmire Arena due to COVID-19 in 2022, and a projected inflation rate to purchase goods and services to maintain a current service level. It also provides a 4% cost of living adjustment for staff and council. Some of the key dates we're talking about, again, this is the very uh, first discussion on budget. Nothing's being approved tonight. Um, we're just going over and getting some council direction. So tonight we're doing the budget discussion, introduction or review of the proposed interim operating budget. Uh, December 7th, we will um, discuss the 2023 user fees and charges first reading. We'll also present the capital budget, introduction, overview of the proposed budget. And um, we will discuss any flagged items that come between either tonight or when council would like to email after tonight and look at the budget. Um, they can again send flagged items to admin. December 21st, the 2023 interim operating budget will be approved. 2023 capital budget will be approved and the 2023 user fees and charges second and third reading. And of course, we all know that we need those done by January 1st to uh, pay bills. So um, CEO Pat, question for clarification. So you mentioned that after the meeting, we could send items for flag, uh, reading the uh, budget um, flagged items and post budget follow-up items. It says that for flagged items, we're supposed to have a vote um, for follow-up. So between November 16th and the Friday before the December 7th meeting, if council had any other um, flagged items that come to mind after reviewing the budget, they could send those and we would include those in discussion on the December 7th meeting. Okay, thank you. Sorry if I confused you on that. Um, April, again, just as a reminder, is the final operating budget, April 19th. And of course that comes after our assessment uh, is shared with council and ourselves. And then we would set uh, the tax rate bylaw for first reading and uh, May 3rd, the tax rate bylaw second and third reading. Some key messages uh, for this proposed draft budget is focused on maintaining program and service levels. Ongoing maintenance and preservation of our current assets are always a focus for the town to protect our $12 million investment and avoid higher repair replacement costs. Most user fees, rates, and charges are not changing. However, there will be some new rates added in 2023. To remain fiscally sustainable and smooth tax rate impacts, we should consider inflation and the increasing cost of our inputs and our tax revenues. This budget reflects the rising costs for supplies, materials, and contracted services due to supply and demand post-pandemic. Some of the uh, key numbers, the recommended interim operating budget has a projected expenditure of $3,561,361. And I've also added in, uh, just for council's information, the reserve transfer five-year history. As you know, I've been trying to reduce the amount of money that we use to um, offset the cost of uh, inflation and tax burden to by using reserves, which has put us below a comfortable level. So uh, 2019, we only transferred 22,000 to reserves. And 2020, we transferred 38,603. 2021, we transferred 59,133. 2022, 132,302. 2023 proposed, we will be transferring 173,981. And again, this is to offset the cost of unbudgeted items. So some of those things that feeds that reserves are franchise fees. There's money built in the um, taxes or the utility bills um, to transfer into utilities for uh, repairs and maintenance. And um, yeah, so those, we don't budget for surplus. Just remember that the money that we budget in the operating budget is to offset uh, unbudgeted costs in the future. So we have no way of knowing that the roof's going to need a $50,000 repair. We don't put that in the operating budget. So it's just like you do, you run your house, you have a savings account, and that's what our reserves are. Um, I also wanted to mention the RCMP requisition, of course, has been um, 
having to get that in the budget. So in 2020, our RCMP requisition was 27,000. 2021, it was 38,193. 2022 was 52,220. And in 2023, it's 78,386. And we're told this is the last bump. But so getting a 24,000 roughly uh, increase every year is a 2.4% tax increase uh, for our residents, just as a reminder. So once it's in the budget, um, and if there's no further increases, that will be a relief to our citizens next year. We won't have to incorporate that into the operating budget. We'll be there from now on. Just as a reminder, though, we still are offsetting the cost of the RCMP by $40,000 from reserves every year. And so um, it'll take us a couple years to fund that completely from the taxes. I'm thinking we'll go down $20,000 a year. Um, CEO Pat, I was just going to ask, um, the council brief where it says 1.5%, the copy that's online for residents to read, are we going to change that uh, portion? Yes, we'll, okay. we'll, uh, it will be posted Thank correctly. Uh, the final municipal mill rate will be approved in the spring of 2023. In addition to the municipal property tax revenue increase, the mill rate for 2023 will also factor in requisition amounts for provincial education and the Mott Housing Foundation. Questions about the budget can be directed to info at ruderheim.ca for our residents. Uh, town residents are invited to watch budget discussions in person or via Facebook. Um, and then I just wanted to talk a little bit about um, the process going forward. And so we would like to do a flagged item process. Worked really well last year. I think council and administration uh, found it helpful. So we're asking to reserve questions till each division presentation is completed. So we have three divisions. Just to remind you, we have uh, corporate services, legislative and development, and infrastructure services. And so they'll each uh, present. And um, so questions for clarification. When direct clarification is required, a response can be provided immediately by administration. Does not require further information from administration or future council discussion. If a question is not adequately answered or requires information to be brought back, it uh, proceeds to be a flagged item. So a flagged item is when we can't answer you right here. We have to do some research, go back. And um, if you're asking us to look at an alternative, you suggest something, uh, we go back and see if we can find some answers for you. And it's also when it's deemed critical for council to approve the budget. So if it's something that's um, stopping council from approving the proposed interim budget, that would be a flagged item. And if administer research this and look at it, it has to be a vote. Uh, majority of council has to agree that that's something that admin should look into. Um, so again, uh, we had 20, 20 last year or something, 20 some items that we brought back last year. We thought that worked really well. Um, in past years, we've had up to 100 questions from councils, um, previous councils, and it, it takes a lot of administration time. By agreeing as a collective group, that uh, helps us really narrow down and do good work on the questions. Um, Follow-up items post-budget. So if there's questions or things that you would like administration to look into that it doesn't um, impede approving the budget, um, there's subsequent motions for that, but it's not considered a flagged item. So we will carry on with the uh, recommended interim operating budget. And just to remember, it's called interim because we don't have the assessment um, numbers yet. So that's why the final budget doesn't come till spring. So Mr. Mayor, if I may just make a quick uh, statement for people that are watching. This year, 2022 has continued with unprecedented challenges to our community, Alberta, Canada, and the world. Navigating the impacts of COVID-19 along with other economic challenges already faced by Albertans has been complex and difficult. It's my privilege and pleasure to act as in my role as CEO for the town of Ruderheim. The town of Ruderheim has had many exciting projects over the past few, five years that has transformed our town into a more accessible, vibrant, and sustainable community. As such, it is imperative that we continue with sustainable, responsible growth, and we support a collaborative and transparent relationship between staff, council, and the community to ensure we realize our true potential as a town. As CEO, I'm honored to work alongside a deeply committed senior management team that works to fulfill the direction of council and ensures that our corporate priorities are met. Together with our community, we have shaped Bruderheim to be connected, engaged, and innovative town, positioned to provide our residents, businesses, and future generations with a rich quality of life. The events over the last few years have reminded us that resources and capacity have limits. 
The 2023 draft interim budget is a representation of that reality. Administration is challenged to develop, implement, and administer policies and programs established and approved by the Town of Bruderheim Council and remain fiscally responsible to our community. Administration supports, assists, and advise Council on Municipal Operations, the information necessary to support informed decision making on the annual budget. The greatest values are realized when we work together. Town Council and Administration are aligned in our commitment to maintain service levels and deliver those services in a manner that is efficient, sustainable, and fiscally informed. Community leadership and participation is crucial for Bruderheim to successfully build its strong foundation. Together, we will ensure that Bruderheim continues to meet the evolving needs of our residents now and into the future. So Mr. Mayor, we'll just take a very high look. Um, I don't wanna to spend too much time on this. This is just the high level overview for council to look at. Um, we're gonna go through every um, department by uh, general ledger. So this um, interim budget takes in everything from every department, all salaries and wages, all employee benefits. So this is just a summation is how we get to our budget of 3,561,000. And that compares it to the 2022 budget. Is there any questions on that? It's more of a summation. Uh, just one question that I have. Um, the taxes collected this year so far, are we pretty much on track then? Mr. Mayor, right now, we are exactly where we were last year. So um, again, I used to do five-year averaging, and I'm finding that difficult with the last two years with people in different situations than they've been. Um, I'm happy where, where we've come since June. Um, a lot of it's been motivated by auction. <laughs> So um, I have to say that the people I've dealt with have been very good and um, I'm very positive that 2023 will bring better things for this community. So people are wanting to pay their bills, just it's tough right now. Thank you, uh, Deputy Mayor Judy. I noticed on this summary that our tax free for three write-off, we've got nothing for next year. So that means that we've got nothing sitting on the books there. What about the new build? So, Mr. Mayor, through Deputy Mayor, that means nobody has applied for that. Everybody, there's no, we're not carrying anybody right now. So you have to apply for, it's a tax rebate program now, if you remember, council approved that. And so if somebody wants a tax rebate, they have to apply. And right now we have nobody in the program. Um, the final uh, tax rolls came off in 2022. Thank you for that. Um, did, so we had no tax auctions in this year? Mr. Mayor, we're still... Yeah, November 21st, 5th, we will be going to auction unless something changes in the next week. Okay. And following up on that, on the changes that we made to the penalty dates for taxes, um, is there any changes or recommendations from administration for that? No, Mr. Mayor, I actually really like that change. Um, I'm able to help do some financial coaching with people on what makes sense with those options. And it gives residents a little bit more breathing room if you can't make the July 1st for whatever reason, um, you're not hit with the 18% if you are able to pay it in another month or two. And in some people's financial situation, whether they're private business owners and that's year end for them, or if they're self-employed or um, we're finding a lot of success with that September, October option as well. well that's good news. Thank you. Yeah. So, Mr. Mayor, I will uh, just talk a little bit about infrastructure services uh, that's headed up by uh, Director Mr. Tomashat. So, infrastructure services touches the lives of every citizen every day. The division is responsible for managing the town's infrastructure above and below ground. Above ground, it's easy to see the impact as department plans, constructs, and maintains streets, sidewalks, and highways, designs and maintains facilities. Below ground, the work is more hidden, but just as critical to everyday life. The department provides treated water, wastewater, stormwater infrastructure that promotes public health and safety. Infrastructure services believes in council vision for the community. Our employees work every day to maintain quality infrastructure services to keep citizens safe all season, facilitate logical and balanced development, and keep the community economically resilient with an expanded level of service. Our focus for 2023 is to maintain core services, improve safety, and deliver on work plan objectives, succession planning, 
implementing a corporate asset management program across all departments responsible for capital assets, develop a corporate safety and training program that is documented and updated on an annual basis. Some of the challenges we see in the infrastructure um, services department is increasing costs from regional suppliers, putting upward pressure on water and wa wastewater user rates, maintaining and replacing aging infrastructure while minimizing impacts on residents, increasing service requirements from provincial and federal governments, along with unpredictable funding sustainability, determining the impacts of climate change on operations and infrastructure requirements. Some opportunities that we see Providing key infrastructure for new growth by preparing estimates for any new government grant programs, engaging with stakeholders while promoting cost-effective methods, working towards a culture of continuous improvement, and continue to explore opportunities for shared services with neighboring municipalities. Efficiencies and changes to business, building on cross-departmental collaboration and coordination for service delivery and to provide infrastructure solutions, developing, promoting cross-training opportunities, prioritizing and sharing resources, Continue review of service levels, environmental initiatives, and infrastructure investments. Some um, of the major CEO Pat, I uh, yeah. just had one one thing I wanted to add under the challenges about the upward pressure. What I heard at the last water commission meeting is that EPCOR is planning on no increase for uh, city water, which is fantastic news, Mr. Mayor. So the change requests, I only. Uh, looked at the ones over $4,000. Um, there are some smaller ones that are listed that will I'll get Mr. Tomashat to go through the actual budget and if there's something there that you want clarification. Um, we changed the title of emergency services to fire hall as EMS is contracted to Lamont County. We're basically just responsible for the fire hall now. So having the 911 under there, um, under the hall didn't really make sense. We moved that to emergency management. So when you see that change of 4,000, it's just being moved over to emergency management. Uh, increased revenue, contracted services. As you know, we are providing services to the Josburg Water Co-op, so we increased that by 25,000, um, and the Bruderheim Water Co-op, so we're um, assisting two water co-ops, so we have a revenue source there. Uh, increased expenses, power, for the it's in the roads GL, by $7,443, that's for street lighting. You can imagine that's because of the increase in power charges. Go ahead, Councillor Wayne. That's just for increase of cost. That's not putting new lights in place. Increased costs, correct. Can you imagine how much it would have went up if we didn't have the LED lights? Yeah. Uh, reduction of revenue, our sale of water. Um, we reduced that by 21300 So I remember when we talked about when we started changing things and making people responsible for the amount of water, um, this is falling in line with all the research that I did that people use less water when they pay have to pay for it. So that's why we expected this revenue loss. Um, again, you have to remember that it's offset by that we're also not paying as much to the commission for that water as well, right? Uh, reduction of expenses, um, contracted equipment maintenance, we reduced that by $5,000, just to, comparing it to the 2022 actuals, um, less less uh, equipment expense the last few years. Reduction of expenses, reserve transfer water. Um, again, we're bringing in less money, so we're transferring less to reserves, $14,055. Reduction of expenses, supplies and material water by $5,000 based on less water meter repairs that we're doing with the new RFs. Reduction of revenue, recycling solid waste by $8,180 based on the new rates. Uh, we'll be talking about that later, utility rates, the new contract. Uh, reduction of expenses, solid waste by $29,111 based on new rates. Uh, campground rental parks, we reduced that revenue by $15,000 based on actuals for 2022. Um, this year we made $15,000 less. Um, and as you know, the auditor, when they do my budget, our budget, sorry, <laughs> um, they always point that out. If I, if in the year previous, we only pulled in so much money, why am I over budgeting for that revenue? Uh, it's not good practice in financial planning to overestimate how much revenue. If we get more revenue, that's a good thing. 
Um, the next one was arena rental. Again, this was a tough one because it's down by 40,000, but we know that's because of the adult teams didn't play from January to March, just the minor sports. And there was less ice rentals, less tournaments, less, less, right? So again, that's based on the actuals for 2022, hoping that's not going to be the case for this season. And it's looking like it's not, we're doing really well. So, and increased expense. We had a lot of men people that visited our hall they would said they would love their bathroom to be upgraded as well so <laughs> as you know we did the ladies washroom so turn the mic over to mr Tomasha and he will go through every department line by line but those are the the larger ones um if you want to hold your questions off till he gets to those areas um, i'm sure he'd be more than happy to explain if they need further So if council wants to look, we can go through the fire hall. Um, CEO Pat, before we get too much further along, does anyone need a comfort break or we're good for, because it could take a stretch for this, right? Okay, we'll keep going. So the fire hall, um, you have that in front of you as well as on the screen. So I'll just help with this one. So is there any questions that I didn't cover? Uh, that 4,000 we transferred over to, you'll see that show up in emergency management. Is there any other questions about increases or decreases there? This doesn't include the fire agreement that might change, right? Yeah, Mr. Mayors, as we know right now, there's we don't pay for that. So, so again, the fire agreement with Lamont County, uh, we're responsible for the fire hall maintenance and as well as um, providing internet and um, power, water, maintenance. Mayor Judy. So when, I, uh, when I'm asked how much our fire hall is costing us, I can use this number? Absolutely, you can. Thank you. Please remember that our debenture payment's in there for 26000 Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Hey, having heard nothing, I guess we'll move on to common services, which is the public workshop. I'll just wait to see if anyone from council has any questions regarding that. Councillor Dana? Of the last one or the one we're looking at right now? Common services. Uh, it's on services. Yeah, this one. Yeah. Um, just for advertising and promotions from 500 to a thousand, what does that get put towards? The advertising and promotions is for advertising, uh, for example, jobs this year, uh, we had a couple okay, openings and we, we didn't have sense. that. Yeah. Yeah. Got it. Or if there's uh, water, if we're doing the hydrant flushing and we want to post it in the paper or something, stuff like that. Um, Dennis, uh, what is the increase in the total revenue from 25 to 50? Mr. Mayor, that's for contracted services for our water co-op. Okay. Okay, so if I hear none, we'll move on to the next one. This is our roads. And give council a minute there. Feel free to ask any questions. Um, under the roads, does this include the snow removal? Yes, it does, Mr. Mayor. I have a question. So is there um, anything that... Uh, um, either administration or public works would recommend if there was uh, a single one thing that we could improve for snow removal for residents, what that might be? I would do have to flag that one. I, I don't have an answer for that. I think our snow removal services are actually above and beyond a lot of other municipalities, but I'm yeah. biased. Uh, yeah, um, and so so are we, but um, there are, there are others that would beg to differ, and so I wanted to take the viewpoint uh, instead of n trying to uh, cut away at things. I wanted to get uh, administration and public works opinion or uh, professional thoughts on what an increase might be that would be uh, one single thing that you could see would be a benefit if we made a change that we something that we haven't thought of from council. Mr. Mayor, could you get a vote on that flag item, please? Yeah, um, so I can pass the uh, chair over to Deputy Mayor. Okay, I got the chair. 
So um, the motion that I would like to make is that we ask administration for a recommended uh, um, um, single uh, item that could uh, possibly uh, make an improvement from um, either public works or administration on what could be improved for snow removal in our community to bring back to council to consider rather than council directing what we're looking for for snow removal maybe if we look for a recommendation from administration public works i'd like to hear what their thoughts are thank you very much for that any questions or concerns with that motion is that motion clear enough mr mayor if i could just clarify does that mean trails and sidewalks and alleys or just the main roads um i i would say the the whole works but okay. uh, the, the big concern that i always hear is about the roads okay, mr mayor thank you any questions or concerns i see you two thinking over there so it's a little bit different take than uh uh, what I've uh, done in the past with the budget items, because um, I think that sometimes maybe we're uh, council overlooking potential ideas that uh, administration could come back that hasn't been thought about for us to consider. Go ahead, Councilor Dana. Couldn't um, administration bring it to us and like other times if there was um, they had suggestions on snow removal? I'm sure they would if it's to benefit and make it easier why just now can't they bring it up whenever um it may have implications to the budget that's why i'm bringing it up right now for example um well, last time we discussed in a council meeting about snow removal was brought up that the wind rowing to the sides caused issues for seniors to be able to access their vehicles. And we were told by administration that there would be cutouts to the vehicles for the seniors to access. Is that extra dollars reflected in this budget in the snow removal? We don't know that. Uh, go ahead, Councillor Campbell. I would like to see some figures uh, uh, in regards to contracted services for snow removal versus our own services. Okay, uh, can't take that one right now. We got a motion on the table that we're discussing. So is that part of it? That's not what I heard well, the motion part of was. One of the suggestions that. Oh, I appreciate that. What I'm saying is we have a motion on the table that we have to discuss. That's what we're discussing I right now. Discussing. And then once we. Pass it? Is that part of is that what Pass you're looking for? Push it down, then we can then we can go back. Yeah. So let's we'll look at the contracted services as a separate one if that's what you're looking for. Mm -hmm. But what he's asking for is an administration to come up with some different or unique ideas that we don't understand. Um, and if there's a cost factor to it, is what I'm kind of getting from your motion, Carl. Yeah. So uh, if there's a single one thing that we could add to snow removal for an improvement that hasn't been thought of before that. Uh, council could consider as part of snow removal to improve it for residents. Okay. Well, I, Mr. go ahead, Councilor. I I understand the question, but I don't really see the purpose. Administration is going to because the snowfall is such a we don't know what we're going to get and everything else. So how can they project? You know, they they can't. I honestly think administration as it comes we have to discuss every item as it comes because we can't set an agenda towards snow so that's what you're trying to do with this we can do this with that i mean i don't like wind roads and i never hope to see them ever again if we don't get no snow that'd be fantastic but i, I honestly believe we're putting a, a, something into administration's hand they have no control over that's my opinion of this as the snow comes they will come back to us and say this, 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 and I can guarantee you they talk about ways they can save money and way they can uh, uh, to lesser the workload and everything else. So I, I don't know why we'd want to put this in place for that purpose because they, they, I'm sure they've taken care of it already. Thank can you very I much for that, for uh, Councillor Filardo. Um, go ahead. Yeah. So we're not looking for a reduction. And for an example, uh, say they. Uh, administration and public works goes back and looks at our snow removal policy that spells out how snow removal is supposed to be done. And there's a specific depth of snow that kicks into gear certain things in the policy. 
and maybe uh, an improvement in the snow removal policy that would be a single thing that they might target might be to lower that number to, and there would be a service cost to that, but that's the kind of thing I'm talking about. Instead of me bringing a motion saying in a snow removal policy, let's see if we can lower that number to something that I arbitrarily pick. I'm throwing it back to administration and public works to get their recommendation. That's the idea. Thank you very much for that. Go ahead, Councillor Campbell. Going back to our snow removal policy, we beat that one to death last council meeting. And we're beating it to death again. I think our administration, our public works, did a fantastic job putting that pass pa pa package together. Councillor Filardo hit it on the head. If there's going to be a situation where we have to do something, administration public works will bring it forward to council. We don't need a motion to rebuild something that's already built. Okay, thank you very much for that. Any other questions or concerns? Call for a vote. All those in favor of Councillor or of, of Mayor Carl's motion, please vote. Defeated. Thank you very much for that. Thank you. You can have it back, Carl. No, uh, Councillor George had a um, question. Um, I'm going to let that one pass. Um, I have another one that I wanted to bring forward for consideration. So I had the opportunity, like I said earlier, to CAO Pat. I talked to some folks from Elk Point, and they look at uh, service in a little bit different light when it comes to contracted maintenance. Um, there are municipalities that uh, use contracted maintenance um, instead of just uh, on demand, which is most expensive, they have a contract, oh, say over a whole season for snow removal, for example, with a contractor, where you could have a much lower cost and it's for the whole season, the contract. I'm just wondering if there's an opportunity to look at contracted maintenance for, because <clears throat> the reason for that is not just the savings on the cost of the contract maintenance, but it also takes into account the cost of our labor and the cost of maintaining a grader and a bobcat and a, a dump truck and having to buy a new grader every 10 years mm -hmm. instead of having those expenses that's put on the contractor. So if they're doing snow removal and their grader fails, instead of us having to rush out and try and fix a grader and we got no grader for two days, that's a contractor's problem and they got to get the equipment there and it's on them for the cost. Do you need a motion for that? So Mr. Mayor, you're asking us to come up with numbers to contract out summer and winter maintenance? Yep. Okay. Yeah, we'd need a motion for that. It's quite a bit of work. I'll pass the chair over to Deputy Mayor. Okay, so clarification on that. He wants administration to come up with numbers for contractor services to look after our snow removal as well as our summer services. Go ahead, Councillor Florida. I am totally opposed to it. It doesn't make any sense to me. Contracted services is like what we see on our highways today. It's contracted, they don't do anything. The ice is built up, they don't salt, they don't do anything. If they go on contract, it means they cut the cost minimum to maintain their contract. And we're such a small group of people here and our summer people do a fantastic job. And I, and to me, that's an insult to our staff here into our public works, just even consider talking about something like this. And I, and I, I'm totally opposed to it. Thank you very much for that. Councillor uh, Oleko. I guess, is, is that being a town of our size, is that a feasible um, undertaking or a feasible way to go about doing things on, would they come for, would they come to clear snow for the, the, the lot of the price that we have here? Um, Mr. That... Mayor, through Councillor Leco, if I could share some experience when I worked for a larger municipality, we all have snow at the same time, we all have wind, we all have rain at the same time. So I would say that that would be the flag for me, is that getting those services. And so what larger municipalities do, they pay a standby fee so that they get first city of Edmonton, Strathcona County, um, larger municipalities like that pay a standby fee. So they, they're retaining fee. So if it doesn't snow, or if you don't need to blade roads or you don't need to, you don't, you're still paying 
it's a retainer fee, right? So um, it's kind of like when some of our regional partners have talked about, let's buy, um, let's buy a tandem truck together. Let's buy, you know, some of those things together. Well, we all need them at the same time, right? That's the issue. Um, so that would be my biggest flag, as well as um, contract services are in the business of making money would be a flag for me too. Thank you very much for that, uh, Councillor Dana. Um, I don't. I don't think uh, Carl meant it as being rude to Public Works or anything. Um, I wondered the same thing, and what you said, Patty. Um, what you just said about we're getting the same weather, right? So that does kind of make me take a step back from it. That you know we'd probably get pushed to the back burner a bit because we are a smaller municipality. Um, but at the same time, it it does make sense because we're maintaining the equipment, right? So. You know we're cutting back on equipment costs right so i think that's kind of where it was going from but now with you stating what you just said about it rains it snows it does everything sure park it, yeah i'd have to agree with not like not going with it but i see where you're coming from at the same time so but. thank you very much for that councillor campbell i have to go along with what we discussed uh, a while ago with Dennis and I, we have to start looking at how we're going to support this town ourselves and what may, what types of equipment we need. Right now we have a real good loader. We have a possibility of putting a snow blower onto it, which moves snow, can move snow three times faster mm -hmm then you can with a bucket or you can with a grater. I would suggest as part of a cost cutting measure that we don't go out and buy a blower this year, maybe we rent one, an attachable blower that, and try it out as, as a, as a uh, experimental procedure and just look at the cost and see it doing efficiency thing on that and, and use that as a <clears throat> maybe a method to transform our our uh, snow removal into a more efficient uh, way of doing things. Um, the conversation has been right about if the snow is everybody needs their own equipment. <clears throat> this is a way that we can improve our our own equipment, improve our efficiency and look at better ways of doing things by ourselves. But uh, I would I would strongly suggest that for this year that we do either do rent a, uh, an attachable blower for our, our big cat. Thank you very much for that, Councillor Campbell. Councillor Oleko? Do we use the same company every year to help to support clear snow? Mr. Mayor, through Councillor Leco, yeah, we do have a contract for service there. And uh, they're very reliable and very competitive. So would it be I, uh, an option to talk to them and, and kind of negotiate a, a better deal maybe instead? Is that a possibility? Um, Mr. Mayor. The only reason I ask is if, you know, a bigger city or a bigger municipality to save a couple thousand dollars isn't as big, but for us it would be a... Mr. Mayor, through Councillor Leco, yeah, we do. We do our due diligence. We get quotes, and I can tell you right now, nobody's interested in coming out here. It's very difficult, That's... and I can tell you that our current contract has been very generous with Park. Uh, comes to mind with school, helping with uh, donation of materials and time. I'm very, very impressed with our contractor. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you very much for that. Anything else, Mayor Carl? Yeah, I'd like to add. Um, so everything that I've brought forward uh, this evening in regards to budget discussions is things that I've heard from residents in our community, which is what our council is charged with doing. So uh, in no way am I trying to uh, intend to hurt or uh, um, judge or uh, embarrass anyone. All, all I'm trying to do is bring forward suggestions that I've heard from folks and bring that to the budget discussion for council to consider. And then folks can hear that we've talked about it and uh, we've heard answers and we know what we're doing and we can move forward with. And uh, Councillor Dana hit the nail on the head. I'm not trying to hurt anyone's uh, opinions or thoughts. And um, if there's any way that we can save some money for our residents, uh, we need to look at it. So 
um, just bringing forward ideas and suggestions. And thank you for the consideration. Thank you very much for that. Um, any more questions or concerns, Councillor Campbell? We're already got a motion on the table that we have to deal with. Well, let's get done with it then. Okay, so let's um, call for a vote. All those in, well, let's read read the vote now. Or I'm reread the motion because now I'm all mixed up. That uh, their office uh, direct the administration to provide budget costs for services, contracted services for winter and summer maintenance, sorry. So we're addressing administration to do the cost for summer and winter services. Thank you very much for that. All in favor? Opposed? Thank you. Okay, defeated, let's move on. You can have your back corner. Thank you for that. And Councillor George, I believe you had something you wanted to bring to the table? Yes. I'd like to make a motion that administration investigate the cost of renting a blower attachment. I don't want them to spend a whole bunch of time on this and uh, see what it would, uh, and maybe implement that into our next, this year's snow removal as a piece of equipment, as it's, as as an experiment to see what if, whether we can improve in efficiency. I'd like to hear uh, Public Works and Administration's uh, thoughts on this uh, proposal before we- Mr. Mayor, we can damage. definitely look into it. That's a flagged item. So you just need a council motion and we'll okay. bring back the information. Okay, so I accept the motion from Councillor George. Any thoughts, questions, or concerns with that motion? Deputy Mayor Judy. Is that on your radar already, Dennis? Thank you. I didn't hear the answer, sorry. Mr. Mayor, through Deputy Mayor, yes, that's administration and has it, has explored that, yeah. Okay, so then it's not a onerous to get a, a response to that at the next meeting. Okay, thank you. Any other comments, questions, or concerns from council? Hearing none, call for a vote. Anyone opposed to the motion? And the motion's carried. So we move on to the next item or on to the next page. Mr. Mayor, just as a clarity, um, that wouldn't happen till 2023 then, just so you know that it's not in the budget for 2022, just so we're clear. It wouldn't happen till January, right? If no, we were to include if it. If you're going yeah. to buy it, if you're going to rent it though. But even to rent, we don't have it in this year's budget, our snow removal budget. It's so what they're saying there. is it wouldn't happen until after January if it does happen. And Mr. Mayor, again, as just a reminder, when we did the winter maintenance uh, policy conversations, if there was extraordinary circumstances, we do have money in reserves. I think Council asked, Aleko asked me for the balance was, I think it was around 80,000 or something. I don't have it in front of me right now, but that's where we would come to Council and say, we need to rent a blower, we need to get an extra loader, we need, so I need this many dollars to come from that reserve. So that would be what we would do in any extreme circumstance. Thank you ever so much for that information. It's helpful. Thank you. So um, are we on the water page now? Yes, we are. Mr. Mayor, we're going to go over the water page. So we're in hot water? Hot water. So if everybody's had an opportunity to look at that, are there any questions or any concerns that stand out? Uh, Councillor Dana and then Deputy Mayor. Uh, did equipment maintenance just go up because of the price increase? Um, I would just think it would have went down now that we have a new loader that we're not maintaining as much, like doing heavy. You could just explain to me and I don't completely understand. Sure. So the equipment maintenance is basically cost and supplies of goods, and that can be tires, uh, oil, filters. Everything has gone up uh, way more than, than I anticipated last year when we put the budget together, as we, I think we've all seen. So that's what the cost increase is for. Thank you. Thank you for the question. The deputy mayor has a question. And Mr. Mayor, if I could just add to that one, just to, uh, also we do variance reports to year end all year long, and we're projecting that we're going to be over in that line item. So that's how we come up with that number. We project how much we're spending every month, and we know that we're going to be over in 2022. So we've increased the budget to hopefully account for that 2023. So if, from a if, revenue perspective, I see that our our water, our sales and goods have dropped. 
Is that because of the bulk station? Is that where I picked it up? I asked her after I asked the question, I'm thinking that might be where it comes from. Mr. Mayor, through Deputy Mayor, that's part of it. Also, sale of water is down. So again, remember I mentioned that people are using less water? Councillor George has a question. Does this budget also include the replacement of our, our pumps? Mr. Mayor, through to Councillor Campbell, yes, that, that would fall under our contracted services. That, that's just repair or is it replace? Re repair, not replace. Replace would be a capital expenditure. This is not very... Okay. So that's just, we're looking at repairing them continuously then? Correct. These are the repairs that was brought up before that or we're looking at. Yeah, yeah. and there are always, uh, Mr. Mayor, uh, there's always repairs or maintenance that has to be done to these pumps throughout the year. Yeah. So, and that's just a number for operating. If a pump should fail or a mortar fails, yeah. I would come back to council and say, okay, we need to take from reserves. It becomes a capital cost, the replacement. And just off the top of my head, what, what is the cost of replacing the, one of them pumps? I did the... I think, uh, well, pump and motor is just a little over 100,000. And I think the motor is around 30 and the pump is about 70,000. That's, that's the, the uh, cannon pumps right there. Yes. The, and if council recalls, uh, Councilor Campbell, we've done really good work council has been very supportive we've done both those pumps and motors over the last five years yeah so i'm projecting that over the next five years it's just routine maintenance based on this number thank you for that thank councillor you. george um if you're finished please turn your mic off is there any other questions on this section um is this where we might talk about the water reservoir mr mayor no okay i was just wondering Seems like we're done with questions on the water. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. We'll move on to sewer. Um, if everybody's had an opportunity to look at that, um, feel free to ask me any questions. Everyone's good? I have one. Councillor George has a question. Do you foresee any like unexpected things that we pretty much caught up on everything that we've had that needs to be done for the next year, like the uh, pumping of the uh, settling ponds and that's all uh, been all done or, or do we have, I didn't see anything in the budget here for any of that. Mr. Mayor, through Councilor Campbell, the Lagoon dredging and all that is a capital cost. This is operating. Um, as far as foreseeing, let's say, uh, uh, maintenance of our pumps, our lift station yeah. pumps, we'll use those as our mechanical. Um, we just had the inspection done three weeks ago, I think, as around, roughly around there. Um, the inspection came back great. These pumps, as, as you all know, we keep them maintained yearly. They're pulled, they're cleaned, they're serviced. We're in good shape there. That's the mechanical end of it. As far as... Uh, any mainline sewer failures, I, I couldn't predict that. Um, again, earlier I stated we'll be doing an assessment in Old Town. We'll have a little better idea sometime in January, February, of what that infrastructure looks like going forward over the next few years. And our affluent tracking systems are all working good? I'm sorry, I didn't catch that. The affluent tracking systems are all good? Yes. Um, we're going to be looking for a comfort break here in the next couple of minutes. So maybe once we get past the next section, then we can stop. Mr. Mayor, we can stop now before I go on to refuge. You want to like. make that motion, Councillor Dana? I motion that we take a, I don't know, five, five minute comfort break. Anyone opposed to that motion? And the motion's carried.
Councillor Dana. I motion we go back into public session. Thank you for that motion. Any comments, questions, concerns? We're going back into public session. Haven't heard none. Call for a vote. Anyone opposed to the motion? And the motion's carried and we're back into public session. And if I'm not mistaken, we're past the sewer sheet now. Yep, Mr. Mayor, we'll move on to refuse. Uh, council has an opportunity to take a look at that and ask any questions. Councilor Wayne. Um, with the organics, this this last little, little trial we had here, um, if it does go forward for next year, is that should that not be included in this, or is that how's so, that going to work? Mr. Mayor, through Councillor Lecco, that's a great question. So, once again, utilities are cost recovery. So, um, I will be having a conversation with Council about for some direction about that pilot and what to do. But again, um, we base these numbers on last year's numbers. And so we'll be looking for a direction on utilities in another conversation. Um, but just remember that whatever your council decides on utilities has no reflection on the operating budget because it's cost recovery. Thank you for the question, Councillor Wayne. Uh, Deputy Mayor, Judy. oh no, sorry, uh, Wayne, you weren't finished. It's cost recovery, but isn't there not a charge for the bins or is that cost recovery as well? Yeah, that's cost recovery. Um, I think you asked me earlier about the um, fixed rate. So that's what that is. The, yeah. Thanks, Councillor Wayne. Deputy Mayor Judy. So I see that our landfill requisition went down. Is that due or do we know if it's due to the usage of that um, compost program? I would say no. Um, the biggest the biggest change was many years ago when I started, we uh, did a lot of cleaning. And um, when you do extra hauling into the landfill, we need to pay separately. And if we just charge it to our account, then they go on a five-year average. So that increased our tonnage. So they go on how much we bring and they do a five-year average every year. So we finally shook that off our average. Uh, it was about five years ago. So now we're normalized at the same. We've been hauling about the same every year. Yeah, I believe Councillor Len brought that up at the last meeting that it was going down. Good news. So saying that, on that landfill requisition, do we know what we've, how much we've hauled in and how much, sure. like how much we, they can, they break it down and they tell us each year what our, what our usage is? Absolutely. Yeah, the only interesting thing, Deputy Mayor, it's a great question because I was doing a lot of work on the utility rates, is residents that go there, that's not sh shared as, like we don't know what that difference is between what's getting hauled in from GFL and what's being hauled in by private people so that's the only thing that we don't know so the fact that it's being hauled in privately they pay for it privately so it doesn't does it go against our numbers at all anywhere no no it doesn't yeah so but we don't accurate the accuracy of actually the waste at Bruderheim that's the wild card for me because remember mattresses we pay for as well if residents take there we they don't have to pay that ten dollar surcharge so we're paying that, but we're not being charged for the additional waste. So is that something that we could ask our landfill to do? That they should be able to track it? Because I know when I've been to other landfills, um, given my address and the town got the copy of everything that I ever took, right? As a weight, as a weight thing, right? Just for knowledge. That's for that. They track all the waste coming in because that's how they control the county's dumping. Anybody comes in, says their county, their Bruderheim, Lamont, and they ask that question as you bring your garbage in. So all the weight is tracked. So they, their numbers, when they get, you get that number, it's a pretty exact number. Nobody gets away free here. It's a, because that's how the county regulates theirs because it's what the amount of people come in from the county. Understand that. But when we ask for the number of what our residents take that's in privately, they don't have that number for us. That's they what I'm asking. They do. Mr. Mayor, through Councillor Flutter, I actually called there and they don't have the division between the two. Yeah. Okay. So it's a, a takeaway. Uh, Councillor Len, did you have a question about the, the overall sheets? Uh, well, please make sure you use your mic. Looking at the budget sheets, and I, so far, then 22 and 23 look very good but I don't have comparison from 21 to 22 
to, to tell us uh, where we went from 21 to 22. We should have, we always just, we usually, normally we don't have a second year 23, a two year interim. We usually do a one year, right? Am I correct? Is that, where's it? Where's the budget from 21 numbers so we can compare 21, 22, and 23? Yeah, I think what he's asking for is another column so that would show what the 21. So where the increase was from? So, Mr. Mayor, we've never done that in the past. Doesn't mean it can't be done. I'm just saying we haven't done that in the past. Okay. I can share that with Council, the sheets from last year, which would show 22, 21, if you'd like. We share those. Yeah, I want to see what the increase is over the last... And this year from last year, then we know what we're where we're going. Yeah. Mr. Mayor, that's not a big deal. I can forward those sheets. That wouldn't require a flagged item. Thank you. Thank you. And so uh, I guess the ask going forward is the same thing for next year then as well, like the next budget cycle. Okay. Is that fair? So, Mr. Mayor, our program, though, isn't set up to do that. I would have to do it on a separate, like I'll be sending out the 2021 numbers separately. This program that you see on the screen wouldn't be able to do that. Yeah, oh, I, I totally understand okay. that, but just the, the paperwork, yeah. I think that's it for refuse. Okay, we will, uh, thanks, Mr. Mayor, we'll move on to Business Infinity Center. Council has an opportunity to take a look at that and feel free to ask any questions. Refuse doesn't include the uh, dumping station in town, right? Like, uh, no, for lack of a better word. Okay, thanks. Uh, Dwayne? Dwayne? I'm assuming this uh, incorporates um, all the businesses that will be in there currently. Mr. Mayor, through Councillor Leco, yeah, that's correct. If you see that we've increased the budget by $6,000. Not yet. That's a good news story. That contract's not signed yet, so. <laughs> so we had somebody move out yeah. and somebody move in, so that's why it doesn't look as large of an increase as you would think. Uh, yeah. So we lost a renter and we gained a renter, right? So, so. Okay, if there's no other questions to that, we'll move on to the arena. Yeah. The council moment to review that, ask any questions. Um, just a question on how did you arrive to the 119.093 total revenue for 23 number? Um, realizing that yes, the uh, revenue you expect will drop, but um, is there like an educated guess at that number or? Mr. Mayor, uh, I think uh, our CAO alluded to that earlier. We have to take into account that we've lost our revenue from January, February, March for 2022. So we're taking that educated guess, the revenue that we made last year for 2022 and putting it forward to 2023. So we're only going to get three months, January, February, March of 2023 and November, December of 2023. So it's just a guess. Um, it could be more. I don't think it'll be less um, based on what we're having for bookings right now. And the arena is booked up heavily. Right. And that, that's why I was wondering how we came up to that number. Yeah, but Just a, a guess at this point. Just a, a good guess. Mr. Mayor, so that is good financial practice. Again, as I said, the auditor um, strongly suggests that we don't overinflate our revenues. Uh, you base them on last year's actuals. Thanks, <laughs> Wayne. The... I'm just guessing here with grant revenue, does that include advertising and stuff that's on the boards? Is that, or what would that be under as income? Sorry, is there? Mr. Mayor, grant revenue would also um, include when we get funds from Lamont County for recreation, as well as um, other grants that we apply for. And absolutely. Yeah. And the rental leases, that's part of that, that you're thinking about the boards and stuff that would come under that. So the, all the advertising are inclusive in that number there? In the rental lease, yeah. Deputy Mayor Judy? Okay, so you got to clarify something on me. So in our final budget of 2022, our revenue was 95000 Is that an estimate or that's our final budget? That was our final budget, Deputy Mayor, and that was based on the 2021 actuals. So why wouldn't we do that for 2023? Because, I mean, we should take whatever we make one year, follow it through to the next year, hopefully making that plus more. 
right? But I don't understand why we went. I want to understand why we went down. I know why you read it and I heard it three times. I still don't understand it. Yeah, that's okay. So 2022, we're projected to have a $40,000 loss from what we budgeted for in 2022. So we budgeted for 95,000 based on the 2021 actuals. That was our revenue in 2021. Because if you remember, um, the arenas were all booked. <laughs> so that's what we made. And then of course, the impacts of COVID, we lost. So we always base on the year-end actuals of the previous year. So the 2022 number that we're seeing here is the budgeted number, not That's the actual. That's not the actual. Number. We're okay, projected to you. make 55,000. Okay, thanks. Uh, thank you. Um, any other questions on the arena, Councilor Wayne? I, I'm, again, I'm, I'm, I just don't understand. What is it for the, like the, the rentals and the boards? What are those, what do those bring in? I'm curious, do you know? So each board will be for a full eight foot by three and a half foot board would be $250 a, a year is what we get for revenue. For oh, that. Okay. Except for the one that's under the policy exemption for yes. the, the um, yeah. nonprofit. Yeah, right. I just think just the number looks low and I'm, I'm just wondering Anyway, so are, are you basing that on the number of boards there and this amount it looks no uh, no 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 i i'm just thinking fifty five thousand. like we're, we're talking it just seems really low for ice rental um and i just thought if there was a higher value in these boards whatever to make up that cost it just doesn't make sense i just mr mayor through councillor leco tournaments is where we make our money because they book it for the entire weekend and we didn't have any last year so that was our biggest loss right because they book the ice completely for three days, right? So that's where you're seeing a significant loss. But there's tournaments this year. Right. Again, what? and this is projected. <laughs> so based on how we've been doing so far, we're projected. So if that number changes by the time we come to December 21st, we'll change that number, right? So right now I can only do based on how we're doing so far, right? Oh, I see. So, so the final budget, that number is going to change. change. Absolutely. So if, if things are on target, but right now, good financial planning says, this is how much we made the first quarter. This is how much we're making right now. I'm preparing the budget based on, and of course, October, there's hardly any rentals. November, now it's looking better. So by the time we get to the final budget, mid-December, we can say, actually, we're only going to lose about $23,000 and we would change that number. So when the auditor audits us, he will come to me and say, why did you budget $95,000 and you only brought in 55? And I have to be able to justify why in good faith. Again, you can't over budget. You have to budget realistically, right? And so I can say based on 2021, that's why I budgeted 95,000. And because of COVID, we didn't have that. And he would say, fine, that's justifiable. So right now he'll say to me, if he come and say, I can see right now that we're going to be 40,000. Why did you budget? You were going to make 95 again, right? When you know that you can't. But if I go to now November and I say, right, like the final budget has to be done by 10th of December, probably. I can say, you know what? No, we're on target. We're going to make it. So then I can put it back in the budget. Okay. So that's okay. just a preliminary number. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Any other questions on the arena? Um, I have one. So, um, the uh, arena um, heating and ventilation system, we know that there's an issue there and the uh, folks that rent the arena uh, have to live with either the intense heat, which our CAO can verify in the arena at times, and the subsequent must be a cost to the utilities extra for putting all the extra energy into there to make it so hot. And then the non uh, existent uh, ventilation in the dressing rooms um, for the folks that are renting the arena that's kind of a turnoff and I'm just wondering at what point we're going to spend the money and, and fix that um, and and is that possibly reflected maybe in the capital budget or um, at some point um, I think we've been advocating or at least asking about it for the last couple of years and we still don't have a fix for that and I'm just wondering at what point are we going to do that and do I need to make a motion or is there an answer? Mr. Mayor, I do have an answer for that. Um, so back in September, I actually had an electrician come out and do an, uh, uh, an assessment on the electrical for all those makeup air units that are on top. Um, 
So they're return fans is what they are. They're interlocked with the makeup air unit that was deemed or condemned um, before I came. Um, so they're interlocked. They've been down so long that all the electrical has been deemed uh, not usable. It cannot be used. Even if we were to replace the fans, the electrical is corroded that bad. Um, don't quote me on the exact number. I was talking to the electrician today. Um, just to get, I can't find the copy that he sent me on the estimate, but we believe it was around that 45,000 just to address electrical before we've even then replaced the fans. So um, if we go back, we're gonna go back a few years. We looked at the makeup air unit. We were looking at around that $20,000 to replace the makeup air unit. The makeup air unit will not do anything without the exhaust fans. They all have to work together. So I think you just said, um, Mr. Mayor, capital this would be a capital cost and myself and the CEO and Sherry we're looking at some different grants that are out there through recreation to try and help us fund some of this and I understand your concerns um, as I think everybody does however financially we just don't have it right now to address it's you know if you had to look at the big picture we're looking at a hundred thousand dollars to just get exhaust fans and make up air units working up again it doesn't mean that we're going against code. That's not what I'm saying. As long as those systems are down, we're not we're not uh, defying code. But we cannot start up the systems with the current electrical. Okay. So um, are we going to have a definitive plan as to when we're going to do the upgrade? Well, again, I guess we could say, you know, making reference to the reservoir. It all has to do with money and grant opportunities, right? Um, hundred thousand dollars out of operating. That's, that's, that's a big expense. Um, it is on our radar for capital. Um, and that will be what council will have to decide and what capital projects are, are priority and which ones aren't. So these are some of the things that would be brought through for the 2023 capital. Yeah. The reason I'm bringing it up is, um, we have hard enough time, uh, trying to make ends meet with the arena. And then we've got this detriment to our arena and, um, having spent a couple seasons getting dressed and undressed in those dressing rooms it can be very uncomfortable and uh, you can smell it as soon as you enter the arena and um <clears throat> that we, we need to be able to fix it somehow and just know that we have a plan because it comes up every year but we haven't done anything about it and we, we need to have a plan and mr mayor there has been some extra expenses in cleaning those rooms and keeping the, the odors down. Um, I know myself, I've seen it just in the last invoice. So we are doing what we can to keep those odors and keep that down. Temperature wise, um, you know, most times teams leave their doors open. It does help to help circulate the air. But however, we're just financially strained to make this work at this present time. So I would ask council's indulgence to just bear with us. We're looking at different grants. Um, grants is what's going to get this and uh, we'll put it on our capital project list and council can decide which ones are based on our recommendations which ones going forward okay and do you need a motion to get the exact cost for the repairs no okay thank you mr mayor can i just back up for councillor Leco? there's one thing i forgot to mention about the grants we use our msi operating as well as there so as well as msi capital we get msi operating and we allocate that to the arena and planning and development that so it's forty thousand that comes from msi operating that's where the other grant money along with lamont county's money okay okay so if we have nothing mr mayor can we move on to the next one Yep. Um, at some point, we're going to talk about capital budget. No, not no, not this meeting. I know. I realize that. I'm just. Yep. Thanks. Next meeting. All right. We'll move on to parks. The council can take an opportunity to take a look at that and ask any questions. It's a relatively small budget, so um, we're dropping communities in bloom. Yeah, Mr. Mayor, we're bored with them. No, <laughs> no we moved that over to economic development and tourism. We thought that was a better fit because uh, we're promoting our community and uh, there's some uh, grant opportunities by leveraging that economic development and tourism money. Thank you. Deputy Mayor. Thank you. Any other questions? We will move on to community hall interim budget. Opportunity for council to take a look at that. And then, no questions. Wayne. 
there was mention earlier about um, five thousand dollars or whatever I think it was for the men's washroom. Is the remainder of this or a portion of the remainder to go towards the kitchen? Is there any, anything done in the kitchen this year? Mr. Mayor, through Councillor Lecco, no, that's just building maintenance to keep that building, the rest of that money. Um, that will be coming through the capital process. Councillor Dana? Are there grants available for community halls? Mr. Mayor, through Councillor Jacobs, there's a few. Yeah, there's CFIP and SIP, and, um, but you always have to partner with a nonprofit to get those grants. So that's what we're looking at. We're getting working really hard at uh, getting some quotes and partnering with a couple nonprofits that use the hall that would take advantage of those upgrades. So thinking about that uh, grant opportunities with not-for-profits, um, looking back at the arena, the um, minor sports, is there opportunity to partner with them to get grants to fix that uh, ventilation issue? Yeah, Mr. Mayor, there is. We just, we have uh, three CFEPs in our community right now. So those have to be closed before we apply for that same funding stream. And all of those will be closed. Um, two will be closed this year and one in the spring. So, so we're looking at 2023. That, that could come to council for uh, thoughts? Pardon? I'm sorry. Um, when when the, the opportunity arises to look at uh, partnering with not-for-profits, can that come, is that going to come back to council? I haven't in the past. I've uh, just approached the nonprofits to say, um, this has to be their initiative, right? So I talked to them about some upgrades that would work for them and us. So um, we've always worked really well together and uh, we put in the grants. Some of the grants are quarterly, some are by by yearly. Um, so yeah, I just, whatever facility we're trying to upgrade is the one, the nonprofit that I will approach that uses that facility. Sure, I understand. Um, but um, from um, a couple of different standpoints, like the uh, men's washroom at the community hall, are we going to lose rentals because the men's washroom is not overhauled versus the um, ventilation and heating in the arena where we could lose rentals because of it? Mr. Mayor, absolutely will lose rentals. It's um, actually quite surprising how many people are very happy with the upgrades we did in the hall in the front and have booked it. Yep. Oh, in the front, I agree. Yep. What was the cost of the women's washroom overhaul? Mr. Mayor, it was approximately $3,000. Okay, so 5000 is in the realm then. Yeah. Thank you. Councillor Dana? Uh, just in regards to the hall, I know when I talked to a few people there, um, the electrical seems to be another issue because there's such an old hall, there's no power. You have to steal from the kitchen and make sure you're not plugging that in over there. So that's another thing that kind of people deter away from when renting the hall. They say it's beautiful. It's just, they're like, it's outdated, right? So, Yeah, Mr. Mayor, we're getting quotes for that. Uh, you're referring to the kitchen, Councillor Jacobs? The kitchen electrical, and then also how there's no plugins at all in the hall itself. In the hall itself, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, we're getting quotes for, um, our focus right now is the kitchen um, because uh, it's very hard for caterers to work in there. So they're not renting it to work in there. They're renting other places and then bringing their food in. So that's our priority. Mr. Marin, just as a side note too, that a lot of our dishes and uh, silverware and those things are all in desperate need. We don't even have enough plates right now to um, for somebody to hold a hundred person event. So those are very expensive commercial grade. So um, those are a lot of the things that come under supplies and materials as well. Looks like we're done in community hall. All right. Um, thank you very much, Mr. Tomashat. We'll move over to development and legislative services. Um, <laughs> Mrs. Cote is our director there. I will um, just do a quick introduction. Development and legislative services focuses on creating and maintaining a safe, supported, and connected community that celebrates diversity and promotes inclusion of all residents. These six priority areas are the focus of development and legislative services, community services, which provides social well-being and community programming, community policing and emergency management, legislative services, which includes administrative support for council, economic development, planning and development, and contract administration. 
As a department with numerous public-facing services, COVID-19 has impacted the work of development and legislative services significantly. From keeping staff and patrons safe in our facilities to taking on emergency response leadership roles and providing community wellness supports. Focus for 2023. Continuing to work on attracting new investments, retaining and expanding existing businesses, promoting and implementing a tourism strategy, diversifying, modernizing the local economy and supporting economic recovery with limited resources. Continuing to ensure residents are safe and connected through ongoing work with partnerships with Lamont County Family and Community Services, RCMP and community organizations located within and outside of our community. Continuing to adapt recreation programs and services to ensure residents have appropriate and timely access. Continuing the development of the Resilient Rural Interagency Operations Centre, fondly known as the REOC, and facilitate opportunities to integrate community and industry partners to test the facility. Continuing to plan and coordinate the development of new growth areas and their impacts on current town infrastructure and integrating climate resilient strategies in our daily operations. Some of the challenges that we see. Continuing to be agile and responsive to emergent and changing community needs while continuing to provide recreation and culture services in a safe manner. Ensuring staff, well, staff wellness and safety while managing increased service capacity and increased complexity of needs for social supports and challenges to access appropriate service levels. Planning for the reduced revenue as a result in changes in government funding while at the same time balancing fiscal pressures related to service delivery partnership costs increases. Continuing to respond to the ever-changing red tape and government requirements that impact our responsibility as a municipality, putting more of a strain on existing resources and creating the need to contract more legal services. Some opportunities that we see, continuing to modernize systems, create operational efficiencies and address existing gaps, continuing to leverage technology to streamline approval processes and connect with citizens and businesses. Continue leveraging the geographic information system requests for information and online customer service tools for property data collection. Engaging stakeholders to partner with support for the four-year strategic priorities set up by Council. Efficiencies or changes to business. Continuing virtual and hybrid programming and events by adapting to technology for online business and fee strategies for recreation and culture services. Clarifying roles and responsibilities. Coordinating the efforts between departments on corporate-led process. Engaging with local economic development and tourism industry to explore future tourism products for our community. Efficiency audit to explore strengths, weaknesses, and opportunities for future work. Some of the larger change requests that we're talking about, increase in expenses. Again, we mentioned this before, move from the fire services, $4,000 for 911. Reduction in revenue, protective services. Um, we're projecting $6,000 less this year for fines from our uh, enforcement services. Increase in expenses, protective services. The RCMP requisition is increasing 26,166 based on the 2023 requisition. Change in expense allocation, protective services, contracted services, reduced peace officer contract by 4,000 to pay for litigation fees for unsightly premises. And just to clarify that, we're now taking people to court. So we have to hire a litigator to go to court. So we reduce the amount of patrols from uh, the peace officers to pay for that litigation. Reduction expenses, planning services, um, that's our contracted planner. We've reduced that 10,000 based on projected actuals for 2022. Increase in expenses, planning services, legal fees. We've increased that by $6,000 for development appeals, encroachments, stop work orders. Decrease in revenue, economic development tourism, the CARES grants completed of $6,000. Increase in expenses, economic development tourism, supplies and materials of $5,500 for a community no vacation app. This would be one that people could sign up for on their phone. We've done research and we believe that for about $5,500, we could get that app. Uh, increase in expenses, economic development tourism, uh, the community revitalization, revitalization was moved from parks over to economic development tourism. Decrease in revenue, community programming of 6,000 because we don't get, we no longer get donations for the STEM award. And we also uh, last year got an ATV donation of 5,000 that we won't be getting this year. Decrease in expenses, community programs, contracted services of 5,000 for the float one-time purchase in 2022. I will turn the mic over to Mrs. Cote. Did you do to my mouse?
Um, we have a question from Council about uh, turning the heat up. Just pretend. Yep. So, Mr. Mayor, the first thing is legislative services. Does Council have any concerns with that? Can you just explain what the community notification app is? Mr. Mayor, through Council Echo, for sure. So that's an app people can download. And then we would be able to send out notifications for community events, programming. You can do a snow removal one on there. You can do, um, so person could check the things that they're interested in, road construction. Um, we could do notifications of regional, like it, you can do it just explores, but people would sign up we wouldn't be pushing it out. And so like every time there's something going on, like it's like a chat group really. But um, I can say that Beggarville has one that I sign up for and you can check the boxes of the stuff that you're interested in. So if you're in, interested in community programming, for instance, you would only get things related to FCSS or events. If you're interested, like you were saying about hockey games going at the arena, we can invite nonprofits to input when there's a bingo, when there's um, a fundraiser, the, the pancake breakfast, that sort of thing. But it would be it would be on the resident to sign up. We wouldn't be pushing unwanted mail into their junk mail. And it's an app and it comes on your phone. So this will be pushed out to the residents to say, great idea to sign up for this. Da, 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 da. Oh, absolutely. We do okay. a huge campaign to okay. get people to sign up. Awesome. Well, and I can you. say that we have one of the highest signups percentage wise per capita for our alert system um in the region and like nr care we all share the same alert system so our residents are uh, really liking that alert system so i think this is just another communication method that we're thinking would help residents i'm shocked by the number of people that say they don't know what things are <laughs> like so we're just trying like newsletters community boards hangers like facebook newspapers so this is just another digital media and it's a one-time fee no it's annually so it's 5,500 every year. Yeah. And that's administered by the town then? That's correct. We would get the contractor to set it up and they would be there if we wanted to change the look of something or do something. That's what you get for the 5,500 support. Much like a lot of the software systems we pay for, there's a support fee, annual support fee, right? So it would be on the town to get those notices from the not-for-profits or do they input it directly? In no, we would have to input it. Okay, so how much extra work for administration is that? I would have to do it for a year to see <laughs> what kind of, right now we're putting that information out on social media. So I'm hoping that an app would just be a copy and paste into another, I can't confirm that. There's a lot of vendors out there. We interviewed a lot, sharing myself. And um, yeah, we've kind of settled on one we like. And um, yeah, I'm hoping that there would be some sort of a linkage like right now, you can post on Facebook, it automatically goes on um, Instagram, those sorts of things. So, so I'm likely, sure the first year would be a bit of work for yeah, sure. Likely it wouldn't uh, really help the seniors at all because they would. I wouldn't say that. I think some of our seniors are very good at some online. Them, yeah. yeah. Depends what your definition of what senior is, what age. My mom texts, she's 86. So, yeah. <laughs> Does she put an app on her phone? Yeah. That's, so, uh, Are there any other questions on that page? Okay, then we'll move on to the next one. We'll look at emergency management. You'll notice that under travel and subsistence, we drop the amount of, um, we increase the amount of uh, costs that's there. Uh, we're going to have to do a lot more training. I guess the question is, what training is that, Sherry? We're, what kind of training? Uh, we've, we're actually partnering with a lot of um, agencies um, around the area, and we're going to be offering a lot of training to get our people brought up to uh, speed <laughs> so they can be able to help in the case of an emergency. Thank you. So, Mr. Mayor, a lot of that is hosting charges, right? So coffee, tea, yeah. rental. And paying for the instructor's time yeah. travel. 
right now um, the government is really pushing F um, um, training for social service parts of things because they've changed a lot of how they do it with the province and there's special um, uh, registration system set out. None of our people in Bruderheim that have ever volunteered that have volunteered to be a part of that have any training or anything on that. So we need to start working towards that. Thank you. Any other questions? Deputy Mayor has a question. Um, somehow I got into some page that somebody sent me with a whole bunch of grants. I see there's grants there for fire departments training and all that kind of stuff. Is that anything that we could partake of? We can't apply on that one. I did look at that one. That's specific to the role that they actually play. It's not for our training. It's more for their day-to-day -day, uh, firefighter um, training. I would hope that Lamont County has the same yeah. information. I wonder if we should send that to them just in case they haven't seen it. It went out to all, all, okay. uh, all municipalities. Okay. Any other questions with respect to emergency management? Protective services budget hasn't changed too much, except for in the uh, rec the RCMP requisition. Councilor Dana has a question. Yes. Why does it keep going up so much? What is the reason behind that? Like that's that makes me sick. How much it goes up? Why? So back in 2019, when they uh, decided that municipalities under 5,000 would start paying, we never paid prior to that for RCMP services, they decided that it would be a certain amount of money per capita. And so they, ours is 70, 70 some thousand now, right? 76. Um, they spread that over four years. So we had a $24,000 increase and it's per capita. So the bigger you are, the bigger that number is. So are they, be okay, yeah. Oh, maybe I'll, I'll ask that another time. Okay. It's okay. Councilor Leonard. Well, that, you know, that's really good. And we've done nothing in the city. And I want us to let the taxpayers know that 8% of their tax dollars is going to police. The increase in taxes this year, if you look at the whole budget, the whole increase of five and a half or four and a half percent is all RCMP. And we didn't get any additional pieces. This was a political move. And we are a political entity, and we should be combating this at the greatest level. We should be fighting it tooth and nail, not look the other way. And I and I truly believe if we get on the bandwagon, to be every other community would follow us because they cannot afford to pay for a policing service we don't get. And it's the silliest thing I've ever seen, and because it's strictly political, and I think we are a political entity, and we have to do something about it. And not just sit here and say, well, pay for it. And the taxpayers have to be told why their taxes are going up five, six percent, because the political people in power today decided just to pick your pockets. That's wrong. Thank you. Um, just to educate the public and some of the council that may not be aware of the history, maybe if we went back on the, the history of the police requisition where it started from, because I believe it started with a recommendation from AUMA, if I'm not mistaken. And Mr. Mayor, I I don't have all the documentation in front of me. It's been it's been five years. So um, yes, I agree that at the time they were called AUMA, Alberta Urban Municipalities. They are now AM um, and RMA, I believe, negotiated with the province on the implementation of this, and um they represent municipalities you're right mr mayor so i'm not sure yeah the larger municipalities were uh feeling that they were shouldering the load uh for rcmp costs and they wanted to ensure that smaller communities pay their fair share so that's where it started from is from the larger communities in alberta this is the ones who instigated this so like fort saskatchewan those kind of communities Right. Yeah, it's not a level playing field. I agree oh. totally. Yep. Because it's all of our mm -hmm. That's Yep. And I know that there's some communities that uh, um, buck the system, and they put a an extra line on their tax bill to show residents where that uh, money is coming from and going to, and for who that money is for. But uh, technically, that's not allowed. Oh, sorry. 
Uh, Councillor Dana, did you want to finish and then? But could someone like post this on Facebook and be like, you see what we're paying and this is what the majority of your taxes are going to? We're on Facebook right now. <laughs> Why well, no? with four people viewing right now? Could someone like <laughs> snip it and just post it on and be like, here you go, have at her. Um, technically, the way the Patty has the costs separated out, some of this uh, cost for the RCMP requisition she just talked about earlier is being paid from money from uh, reserves. And so not the whole cost is on our tax roll. So we can't say that it's five and a half percent is what's causing that. If we put all of that cost on there, we would be at like 10%. Uh, Councillor Wayne has a question. On the on the front here, there is a um, note saying there's a four thousand dollar reduction in expenses for protective services. Does that show on here, or where would it show? Does it because you look at contractor services, it went down by three hundred. So yeah, Mr. We Mayor, actually increase it still, and then yeah, just, if you remember, I said Mr. Mayor through Councillor Leco that we reduced them by four thousand, but we applied that to the legal fees in court, so we reduced them by four thousand but we actually transferred that to legal fees. So it's under the same line item. That's why that is a little confusing when you see the summary sheet. So it's still under the contract services. Right. Still yeah, because okay. lawyers are still contracted services. Okay, yeah. okay. thank you. Yeah. Um, just to follow up on Councillor Len's uh, comments there, if there was a motion that you wanted to make, Councillor Len, in regards to what you would uh, like to see council direct administration to do, I'd be happy to entertain that motion, but I'm not sure if you want to make a motion at this time. So if you want to think about that, Councillor George and then Deputy Mayor Judy. There was a comment made where we uh, cut our uh, services by $4,000 for legal fees. And we cut the services for patrols, right? Mr. Mayor, that. through Councillor Campbell, that's correct. Uh, I think we have cut a needed service uh, to pay for another. And um, I think the residents of this town is entitled to protection, more so than legal combat. So are you making a motion, Councillor George? Yes, I'll make a motion that we do not, we put that money back into our our uh, patrols and find another way to, to cover our legal expenses for courts. So uh, Mr. Mayor, that would essentially be increasing that line item by 4,000 would be the motion? Yeah. Can we be a little bit more clarity on exactly which one for the folks listening and for Sherry so, trying to write this out? <laughs> Mr. Mayor, the motion would read that we increase um, protective services by 4,000 to um, accommodate the legal fees for court. Yeah, and that fits under the licenses and fines or where does that go? Mr. Mayor, that's contracted services. Okay, thank you. That sounds good, George. Yep. I uh, was able to capture that, Sherry. Okay, any comments, questions or concerns with that motion, Councillor Lent? I, I agree with him 100% by putting that additional money into legal fees because uh, it, it's, that's just going to grow. Because, again, of another thing this province has done to us by taking our ability to, weigh, to put their penalty bills on their taxes. They've done this. A provincial government, again, saddled us with another bill, and which we should not be paying either. But at this the way we have to manage it, I think it's a very good way what you're doing it at this time, but I still think we should be, we did send a letter, I believe, opposing this, and uh, we should be still stronger in voice to it because it's not a good thing for our community because our community will lack behind because of that, and all the small communities will. So I honestly think <clears throat> keeping it the way it is with the altering is a good ideal for now, for temporary, until we get some response from this pro provincial government. So this this is actually aiming at bylaw services, not the RCMP services, right? Mr. Mayor, that's correct. Okay, just wanted to make sure that yeah, it was so clear. Because of the uh, reduction, we cannot tax people for unsighted premises. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> Deputy Mayor. So I remember at one time we were going to come back and review the community standards bylaw because some of those bylaws we couldn't enforce because of the wording. So we were going to tweak them and make them more um 
easier effect, easier to work through and easier effective. So then it wouldn't go to the legal services. Uh, is that on the agenda or in the plan? Yeah, right now they're with our other partners to review at the provincial level. Um, but this is directly in reference to unsightly. So there's nothing about it being, so when somebody doesn't, um, I think I've, mentioned that it takes about three years. It's almost like an auction for taxes. There's a process that takes two to three years to take somebody to court for unsightly. So, yeah. So saying that, I mean, so we're on a three-year process. We've had some people in the queue to do that too. That's where this extra $4,000 is coming from. That's why we put it in. Um, so then technically our enforcement should not be needed this year for those particular properties because they're already being handled through the legal process. Am I right or wrong thinking? We'll so probably the need them for the follow-up part. <laughs> okay. To serve okay. notices and I'm not comfortable with our staff doing that. Councilor Ashley. So uh, Councilor George, please turn off your mic. So that four thousand dollars that's taking away all patrols of bylaw, just some yeah, it just reduces the patrol time. We pay per hour for oh. patrol time. So when people call them, we get charged, right? And then we have some proactive patrols. So um, to to offset the impact of budget, we reduce their patrol time. But I think Councillor Campbell has a motion to add that back in. And so how much would um, $4,000 reduce? Just hours? Um, probably about 50 hours. For the whole year? Yeah. So well, that's what an hour a week on average. And what do we get? What what would be what do we get from them now, I guess, with that reduction? What Mr. Mayor through Council so, Aleko, what do we get? So you said that four thousand dollars is equating to about fifty hours yeah. roughly. So what do we get now if we're to like how many hours do we get a year or a month whatever it is however you want to put it i don't know how we does that make sense yeah. um like if we're only losing an hour a month but we only had two hours a month then keep in mind it's it's call out and it's yeah i know i understand that so um, right now we're getting it's not always that per month but about 13 to 15 hours a month That'll be with this reduction? No, that's okay. before the reduction. Okay. So that's quite significant. Um, and the impact to the bottom line for the budget would be? About a half point, a percent, not well, quite, like 0.4%. Okay. And, and remember too, this is interim, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. absolutely. Any other comments, questions, concerns on this motion? Haven't heard none, call for a vote. Uh, who's in favor of this motion? In favor of, yep, yep. And opposed? And the motion's carried. Thank you very much, that was a good discussion. Is there any more under protective services? We can move on to the next one. So for the FCSS budget, um, you'll notice the grant revenue change, and that's because uh, we had a seniors transportation grant. And what we discovered is that um, many of the seniors were actually claiming the money and just driving themselves, which was not what that grant was set up for. So we removed it from the budget. Um, and so the $500 is the volunteer um, grant that we apply for every year to help our community out. So that's the difference in that budget there. And then under other expenses, we reduced it because we don't have a lot of um, expenses for FCSS. It's pretty well carried out by the Lamont County. So, and so that $2,000 wouldn't be an expense anymore for the transportation. Okay. So question then, do the seniors realize that they're not going to be able to claim for that anymore? Yes, I called them all. Okay. Because they were faithfully all making sure that they claimed it every year. Yeah. <clears throat> so it's a reduction for our seniors. And Mr. Mayor, just remember that was a grant from Lamont County and we had to report. Yeah. And that's where the struggle came. Um yeah to do the reporting. 
Okay. And I have to say, um, in the years leading up to it, it was to the point that the grant wasn't being used. And um, I know Judy was calling people to get them to use that money up, right? Because we have to submit all the expenses for it. Right. Yeah. Thank you. It seems like we can move on to the next one. So planning and development. Um, there isn't a lot of change on here. We, uh, there is a, on the office expense, we decreased it a bit. Um, we dropped back the amount of advertising and promotions. Right now, there isn't a lot of development happening. And so we've decreased that at this moment. Uh, if that changes a little bit later on in the year, it looks like we'll have more development. We'll revisit that again in the spring. Um, the um, legal fees you'll see have gone up. Um, we found out very quickly with our last um, appeal we had how quickly le legal fees come up. Um, and so we've had to put some put a budget amount in there. It just seems like lately there's more and more uh, planning development things that are coming up that we're requiring legal counsel for. So we've increased that by six thousand um, dollars. To offset it, we cut back the supplies and materials by a thousand, and uh, we decreased contractor services uh, because right now development planning development isn't as busy it has as it has been in pa in the past. Again, we'll revisit that after Christmas if we need to. Um, so that that's a kind of a conundrum, but you're saying on the one hand, we're going to reduce because there's not much happening, but on the other hand, we're going to increase the legal because the planning is costing more, but we're saying that there's going to be less. So. so what's happening right now is when we're doing our compliances and when people are selling the property, this is where all the legal issues are starting to come up. Okay, thank you. So it's uh, not so much on the development, it's more on the planning end of things. Okay. It's it's more on things that have happened in the past. Deputy Mayor. So as people sell their homes and to make sure that they're compliant or not, do we have all the records for that kind of stuff? In most cases, we do. And is there an extra charge a lot for of them it, to ask for for all that? I know it goes back to charges, but is that part of our charges fees when they ask for that stuff? Uh, yes, absolutely. That's an administration fee part of it. A lot of it is based on there. A lot of where we're running into difficulties is based on the real property reports and the fact that they have done things that they're on reserve land or they're they've extended their property where they don't own property, or they've built on their neighbor's property. Yeah, I'm just uh, spitballing, thinking out loud. Um, one of the things that council was on about for next year is to be more strategic about economic development. And would that be in, reflected in here or somewhere else in the budget? Mr. Mayor, that's the next one. Okay, thank you. Any more questions on the... On the um... Planning and development. Okay. Under economic development, the grant revenue is the MSI that uh, the CEO Patty addressed previously. Um, contract management for economic development and tourism um, has been decreased slightly. Um, and the um, uh, supplies and materials, I uh, can't remember where that one was about. Smith, I have to go back up here, sorry. Got to find my sheet. Under economic development and tourism supplies and materials, we have um, things like um, resilient rurals. Oh, and this is where your resident cell phone communication um, program is. Or the that Patty talked about earlier about the app that it's a part of that, and then it's your things like your flags that we have to replace all the time, um, and display boards, uh, pamphlets that we're putting out. That's what that cost is. Fifty five hundred of that is the app, right? Fifteen thousand is the communities in bloom. Got yeah. there. Are that twenty two thousand? Yeah, we do. We like just moved that. it over there. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and when and, and when we say communities in bloom, that's all your your park signs. As it, like it's a lot of things that are for your parks, your signage, your your banners, um, street furniture. Yeah, so and your flowers. Um, just wondering uh, out loud. Uh, sorry, Councillor George, that fifty five hundred. Is there a way to do a pilot of that and not incur the first cost right up front or? 
or weigh with the reverend re residents if they would actually use it. It's it's a fair amount of money to. If it was a free app, that would be fantastic. Like yeah, Mr. Mayor, there's no for... way to do a trial. Um, we can definitely do a survey. We haven't had great success, but we definitely could do that. Yeah, we. I know we have a survey out there right now. I'd be curious to see what the response for that is. Councillor George? That app is a nice thing to have. But we have so many things that we need that are necessities. I think we should be looking after the necessities before we look after the nice things we might want. I feel we should not be paying $5,500 for this app. Um, we have other ways of communicating. At this time, we have to start looking at how we're going to save money and get the best bang for our buck. Councillor Dana? Can you explain the app one more time, please? <laughs> so, Mr. Mayor, through Councillor Jacobs, just to back up a bit, this was council direction. There was a motion on the table for us to look into this for 2023, so that's why it's coming to you. Um, so the app would be on your phone. You would download it or your tablet, and you would be able to receive notifications of community events. You could do weather events. You could do nonprofit events, like it expands to anything that you want and a resident would sign up for which things they're interested in. Like we can say council meeting tonight. So instead of social media, which a lot of people are not on social media, you'd be surprised how many people are not. Um, that is one of the main ways that Facebook is our biggest reach still, if you actually read the CAO report, um, that's our biggest reach. And so for the people that aren't on Facebook that don't read the bulletin and things like that, this is another option. We're having great success with the alert system. People like, but they also like that it's only used for that. Some people, right? So in Vegreville, it's very successful, the app. Um, so like snow removal, they'll update it. Okay, we're doing this street this day. Um, if there's construction, they update it. There's construction, use alternate routes, those sorts of things. If there was uh, emergencies, we would still use the alert system for those people, right? So. Councilor Wayne. Is there going to be a, a census this coming year? Do you know? Mr. Mayor to Councillor Leckel, there is no more municipal census, only federal. Okay. The you only know, reason I'm asking is there, I remember talking about this, some way of getting back, getting a hold of residents and then notifying them what's going on. Is there maybe for this year um, doing like a, a, a bulk email, getting people to register emails and send out notifications that way? Um, I don't know if that's a feasible thing or if it's a time consuming thing. It's just, yeah, but it's also time consuming putting in information all the time of what's going on. You're just sending it to an email and you're clicking one button and it goes to everybody. Um, so a couple so. things with your app. What happens is you download a free app and it can put information on any kind of social media that you want. All you do is tell it where you want to go. Okay. So I have four different types of social media. I put one message out there and I tell it exactly which one to hit and what time, right? So with these apps, they've made them so complex that and so many different types that you don't have to hit them all all the time, right? You hit which one works for the better one. And one app tells you exactly where to go with the same message and they tweak it, right? Yeah. So, so less work, right, than emailing, okay? And technically when you put out an email, and you're sending all these people, you end up with too much spam coming back. Okay, that's what ends up happening. Yes, you have to have their permission, all that stuff. But when you're doing any of that stuff, it comes back. I like the idea of the app, but I also have to think budget. I'm sorry about that, Wayne. No, well, that's I, I, so I'm still saying, like, I think maybe we need to look at it again um, for Would next there... year and, and do it a different way this year. I, I just, again, wants and needs. I know it's a need, but I just don't know if it's high up on the list. I don't know. Would there be any way to get anyone to, um, what's the word I want to put in there, sponsor it, like Sonovas or somebody along that line, some some bigger company, some support from a company, some, support from a company, some bigger company than us, and, and and I'd like to leave it in there for now and just see how many small communities our size are using it and to see what the feedback is from those communities. Like Vegreville's 5,000, 6,000 people, right? 
Um, have we got any other people that are in the 2000 mark? Just because that's where we want to be. There East be of us, that. I don't have a list right with me, but um, we did do some research. It's, yeah, there is communities 1,500 to 3,000 using it. What? When we were meeting, meeting with these people, a lot of them, a lot of the communities did it when they redid their websites because it tied, they, they did the website so it tied into the app. We're in a bit of a different situation. We just redid our website. And so there will be some work that we're going to have to do to make this app work with it. So the other thing coming back to budget, and I know it was at our um, our first economic development one the other night, came back to um, doing some type of a gap analysis of businesses to attract and all that kind of stuff. I know it's not in the budget. Um, I'd like to see a line item for it. Saying that, I also would like to see if we could um, connect with our larger communities, either Lamont County Economic Development and Strathcona County, and see if they can help us because they've already kind of done that gap analysis for areas. Is there a motion required? What do you think? Is that a budget item or are you just inquiring? Well, it's going to cost us money. It could be, right? Yeah. Or, or, and I guess, what are your thoughts? If we worked on something like that, could we partner with either one of them and it may not cost us nothing? Or is that something have, you may want to do the research and to yeah, find Deputy out? Yeah, I've actually never looked into that gap analysis thing at all. Options. Yeah. Sorry. So, I mean, I off the top of my head, I'm thinking they're going to charge us ten to fifteen thousand dollars, and they're going to give us some kind of form to fill out and all that kind of stuff. Don't have that. So then, saying that, I was of course talking to other partners and found out that others have already kind of done it and might be able to help us and maybe not charge us. So I don't know if you want it for a motion. I could put it together. If you want it in the budget, we need a motion. If you just want me to look into it after, there's no motion needed. Okay. So not doing a motion at this time. Okay, thanks. Any other discussion? Um, <clears throat> again, on the 5,500 that we're spending, so a lot of our community groups need volunteers. Is this an opportunity that they be able to tap into this to send out opportunities for volunteers support? Absolutely, oh. Mr. Mayor. Okay, well, that's a benefit to the community for sure. Um, I, I wanted to ask a little bit different question. So the 15,000 for CIB, what does that buy us? So Mr. Mayor, I think Mrs. Cote touched on that. So that's um, um, parks decor, furniture, banners, um, flags, um, not, not Canada and Alberta, but other type flags that you see out on the power poles, um, Christmas decorations that you see out on the power poles and stuff. Um, of course, the planters replacing um, landscaping materials, flowers, all of that. One bench is $2,000. One sign is about $800 for, uh, if you notice, we revamped the um, the interpretive centers, thank you. Um, there's new signage there. They were all faded and peeled. Those were about $3,000, all those signs replaced. Uh, a new garbage receptacle is about $1,800. So it doesn't take long to burn up 15,000. Flowers is about 7,000 a year. Okay, so we're replacing maybe one or two benches, and maybe some garbage bins. Mr. Mayor, we kind of pick one area to kind of revitalize. Okay. And that's why I sort of retermed it, community revitalization sort of an ongoing maintenance we're not adding new we're just making sure we keep up what we have so no events as no part of no that. events there that's just for yeah keeping our um so when you talk about travel and tourism i felt that it's better there if people get a good vision of our community that brings people into the community that's why we moved it over there okay the uh, i'm sorry I guess the tourism part is somehow we have to try to direct people instead of driving by on the highway to actually come into town. <laughs> how do we how do we work that? But thank you for that. Any other questions on this section for economic development? Mr. Mayor, you brought up uh, an economic development person, I believe contract. There's nothing in this budget currently for that. So if council wanted to give us direction to put that in, that we'd be looking for that while we're on this page. Councillor Dana. So that would be the person to kind of guide us into growing. Like we would need that kind of person so our community could grow more, right? You know. Oh, Mr. Mayor, I think is referring to a few years ago we had a contracted service um, that went and tried to attract and support 
local business, which we are doing through admin right now without the contracted service. Does it take up a lot of your time? Um, it does, but I have to say that uh, Mrs. Cote and myself have split that up and I've enjoyed, like I go to the GEAT meetings now, which is the Greater Edmonton Economic Development and Tourism. And um, like we, we split up the meetings, lots are virtual now, which they weren't before, which meant a lot of driving. Um, I've enjoyed getting to know what's going on in the region and things like that. Um, I think it's been helpful in my role. So I think it's a learning opportunity when you attend those things. But as far as um, going to Calgary, to the which we used to send people to, the contract services, um, we don't do things like that for sure. Going to like conferences and stuff like that, we don't do that, so. Thank you. Um, on the $5,500 uh, app uh, portion, would it be feasible to get an idea on how much time administration might be devoting towards this because recognizing that, yeah, we're, I think we're going to get a part-time person to help out, but is that going to uh, be chewed up by looking after this app and then you're not getting the help that you need, you know? Do you need a motion for that? Oh. I think we beat this one up pretty good. Sorry. Here, community programs. Um, so the um, I'm trying to figure out. Where, okay, I'm going to take a look here. Um, under the um, I made a change here. I'm trying to figure out where I put it. S supplies and materials we took down just a, a little bit for this year um, to try and help balance our budget a bit, um, and that we just kind of moved it around as to how how we placed it. We put in five, I think $5,000. I'm just gonna look for my program, sorry. I'm just gonna look for my backup papers here. We did uh, put in $5,000 for a, a kind of a contract to service because we do a lot of work with the uh, Fort Saskatchewan Multicultural Association. And uh, and so some of the some activities that she brings to us, um, there's a bit of cost for, for them to come in and be our partner. And so we put five thousand dollars in the budget this year to have that happen. This um, it looks more and more like we're going to be doing a lot of partnerships with them because we have found that together, if we apply for the grants, we're getting more money and we can service both communities with it. And so we're we're working together on a lot more of those things. Are there any other questions, Councilor Wayne? I noticed there's, um, we've discussed, and I, I know it's an expense, but um, somebody to um, put programs on in town. Um, what kind of cost would that be if it were in here to have somebody to plan, get people involved and do whatever it needs to be done to do, do events in town? Because um, right now it's many, 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 many man hours from a couple of people and, um, I don't know if that's a long term, like feasibly long, feasible long term. Um, we just, uh, what kind of cost would that be? So, Mr. Mayor, through Councillor Leco, we are re putting that uh, admin person back to full time in this budget. Um, remember, in 2022, I cut out 25,000 for us to make it through, um, and we're we're starting to think that part of that role would be programming, community programming, and helping, but. My dream would be our signature event. We would hire a contracted person for that event. Um, we're just not there yet. So, and you say twenty five thousand. What? Um, I guess is that what two days a week, a day a week? What is no, that? No, we've moved. So remember, we used to have a full time customer service rep, and we cut that out of the budget the last few years and just use part time help when we need it. And uh, we've returned that position to full time. So we would like to go a year to see having that extra person in the office, if that's going to help relieve some of the pressure of programming. Okay. Okay. But I do see in the future that it would be really great to hire a person if we had a signature anchor event to organize and make it very successful. So. Okay. Thank you. And that portion is covered in the budget. Yeah, that would be under general administration. Okay. 
And so that person that you'd be looking for, the um, customer support at the front desk, be someone hopefully with some experience planning events kind of thing? Yeah, we're thinking on media, very much like our resilient rurals uh, people that we have right now. They're pretty amazing um, on their technical abilities and able to market and write articles and, 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 and. So we're starting to see the value in that type of person. And um, yeah, so we'd like to give it a year to see if that will help. And resilient rurals doesn't fall under community programs, does it? No, Mr. Mayor, that's completely funded by grants. Okay, thank you. There is some cost for resilient rurals, so under economic development. Um, they kind of come under that umbrella for some of the supplies they need. And the other thing with respect to community programs is we're starting to work a lot more with the nonprofits too and try and get them involved and start taking the lead like they do in most communities. Um, in a lot of the other communities, it's not the towns that is running them, it's the it's the nonprofits that are running the events. And hopefully with the partnership with the um, Fort Saskatchewan Multicolor Association, that'll take care of some of that. So I guess we're okay to go to the library. And you can see the library budget is pretty well the same. Mr. Mayor, that would be the uh, increase that council voted for previously to the Northern Lights. Uh, for Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mayor, unfortunately, our corporate services director, Mrs. Sinclair, is somewhere very warm and not here. <laughs> so I will do my best to cover this off. Corporate services is at the core of the town of Bruderheim's administrative providing internal services and advice to all departments to maximize effectiveness and coordination and respond to the needs of residents. This department's efforts allow other departments to concentrate on delivering services to citizens. The corporate services department provides leadership and oversight, promotes long-term fiscal sustainability for the town. The department performs vital support roles that help the organization successfully deliver programs. From financial reporting to financial analysis and corporate performance measurement, this department provides the information expertise to support evidence-based decisions. Through facilitation of the corporate budgeting process, corporate services helps the organization, organization align its operations, activities, and financial resources to achieve its strategic goals. Some of the main functions of corporate services include assessment of municipal property taxes, investment income, corporate managed accounts, corporate insurance, organizational employee payroll and benefits, long-term debt repayment, corporate reserve transfers, budget allowances, year-end audit. Focus for 2023, maintaining core services and delivering on work plan objectives, implementing a corporate asset management program across all departments responsible for capital assets, continual development of online services for our residents and businesses, Continue to review the utility expenses, establishing clear objectives for each of the utilities. Some of the challenges, monitoring and responding, organizational financial impacts arising from unforeseen economic conditions, ensuring the town of Bruderheim is flexible in its responses to future decisions by the levels of government. The ability for customers to do business online has created a different line of business that has to be resourced. The reduction of staff in administration office has put a portion of administrative duties on corporate services staff. Opportunities, modernizing systems, creating operational efficiencies and addressing existing gaps. Continuing to research and demo technology to help reduce workloads and strain on staffing resources. Looking at contracted services to provide services that were previously done internally. For example, the campground bookings was outsourced in 2021. Efficiencies or changes to business. Eliminating manual and duplicate processes, streamlining planning and budgeting processes. Develop a comprehensive resource plan for capital projects. Developing cross-training opportunities, prioritizing and sharing resources. Some of the significant changes in uh, corporate services, increase in revenue, franchise fees, that was a council motion, will be um, increase of $11,062. And that, of course, is based on usage in 2022. Increase in revenue, interest revenue is going up. Uh, $6,000 for an extra we're projecting based on the 2022 interest rates. Uh, leases, we were able to um, get some people to start paying their leases, which was fantastic news in 2022. And that would be commercial leases. Increase in expense, um, we put the 25392 back in the permanent full-time admin assistant. Increase in expense, uh, transfer to reserves, 11062 based on council motion that franchise fees are be transferred to utility reserve. 
Reduction in expense, um, $39,899, properties that are off the tax rebate program, so that's no longer an expense. Increase in expense, apply to 4% COLA for staff wages. Increase in expense, apply to 4% COLA to council remuneration. Sorry. This is you know, a fairly- uh, Just a quick question on that interest revenue. Where is that uh, slotting into? Is that going into reserve or? Just general. Oh, so it's Income just revenue. operations then? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's budgeted for every year. Um, I think just about, yeah, actually everything on the right-hand side that's increased or decreased, I addressed already. So I don't know if there's any questions from council or direction. Deputy Mayor Jim. So when you talk about rental lease revenue, where does that come from? Like what type of product? Rental lease. Oh, let me look just a minute. So it's a revenue, like so. That's the one that says 7,500? Yeah. that like rental of equipment from the shop or no that would be admin <laughs> just have to find it sorry Dana's freezing now too you see it, So it wouldn't be the infinity center because that should be somewhere else. Sorry, that is long run and bell rentals, lease rentals. Um, Councillor Dana had a question. Are these salaries, is this in? Salaries is office. And the contracted services would include the, the CAO cost, right? That's correct, Mr. Mayor. And they, yeah, they were expecting it to stay the same. So that's not just the CAO, that's also your uh, weed inspection and a piece of, no, just weed inspection, right? And what? No, under contract management. Admin. Oh, contract management. Yeah, that's yes. weed inspection and CAO services. They're lumped together. It looks like uh, we're at the end of questions. Nothing in land sales this year, Mr. Mayor. Yep. Um, is it worth doing a follow up on what we're going back on? Mr. Mayor, just in conscious of time, um, admin could put together that list and send it to council. And again, you have a couple of weeks if you want to go through and you think of something else. Um, please email everyone when you're asking those questions because somebody might have the same question. Um, and we can definitely uh, update the list and uh, be prepared to present those answers. Great, thank you. Um, so no motion is required and we move on to- uh, Mr. Mayor, if we could just get a motion that council accept the okay. interim operating as information. Great, so we're looking for someone from council to make that motion, Deputy Mayor G. I make a motion that town council accept the 2022 interim operating or recommended budget council brief as information. Thanks for that motion. Any comments, questions, or concerns with that motion? Councillor Len. I would like to, uh, rethinking things, I have the 21 budget at home, so don't go through that extra effort, okay? On my behalf, thank you. Okay, thank you for that. Um, so 
Any other comments, questions, or concerns with that motion? Haven't heard none. Call for a vote. Anyone opposed to the motion? And the motion's carried. So now we're on to reports, mayor and council committee reports. Someone like to make that motion to receive those reports as information. Councilor Dana. I motion we receive those reports as information. Thank you for that motion. Anything that needs to be added at this time about uh, mayor and council reports? From council, anything? I do have one thing. Um, this afternoon, uh, or was it at lunchtime? I think it was at lunchtime. Um, had a phone conversation with um, Municipal Affairs Minister Schultz and her staff and our MLA, Jackie Hominick. She uh, lined up this meeting and it was a follow up again about our water reservoir issue. And um, MLA Jackie lined up this meeting for us, thankfully. And my question to Minister Schultz was the same as it was the plea to uh, Minister MacGyver. Now that he's gone and we have a new minister in there, um, I quizzed about where we could possibly find some support, be it in the grant that we got turned down for or somewhere else. And um, they're following up with uh, Minister Drishan, uh, if I've got the name right. And we'll see what comes from that. Uh, she is a rural uh, person from small town Saskatchewan. So she understands the challenges that rural municipalities have. Um, she lives in Southern Alberta and we'll see if she helps us out. She seems sincere and we'll see. And uh, that's the one thing I wanted to add to that report for me, because I don't think it was in there. And that happened today. So um, anything else for the mayor and council committee reports? Haven't heard none, call for a vote. Anyone opposed to the motion? And the motion's carried. Now we move on to chief administrative officer report. Did someone make that motion? Uh, Councilor Asher. That council receive the chief administrative officer report as information. Thank you for that motion. Any comments, questions, or concerns with the CAO report? Haven't heard none. Call for a vote. Anyone opposed to the motion? And the motion's carried. Now we can move on to correspondence and information items. Just on a side note, that's probably the first time in like, I don't know how many meetings that we haven't had questions for our CAO and her report. Everybody must be tired. <clears throat> Uh, need a motion for the correspondence and information items from council to receive his information. Councilor Asher. That town council accept that, sorry, that town council accept the October 31st, 2022 to November 11th, 2022 correspondence as presented. Thank you for that motion, Councilor Ashley. I have to admit that uh, a while ago at the seniors breakfast, I saw Former Councillor uh, Pat um, from that lives in Fort Saskatchewan now, and where you're sitting, she used to sit, and she used to make a ton of motions. So I was like, "Yes, somebody's making that motion. Awesome!" Um, any comments, questions, or concerns with that motion, uh, Councillor? No. And just one thing to add is uh, everyone's seen the emails from Lamont County municip municipalities in regards to rec funding. Just wanted to make sure that that was mentioned and. Um, other than that, uh, if there's no other comments, questions, or concerns, I will call. F call f I'm sorry. I want to bring this. Oh, okay. Well, fire away. Just a reminder that this weekend is the first craft market going on between 9:30 and 5 o'clock at Walker School. So if you guys don't have anything going on, stop by the craft market. Great reminder. Thank you, Councillor Dana. And that goes on multiple times in the coming month, right? Yeah. Yep, thank you. Anyone opposed to the motion for correspondence and information items? Haven't heard none. Motion is passed, and we need a motion to go out of the public session. Councillor Wayne? I make a motion to go to regular session. Okay, and anyone in opposition to that motion? And the motion's carried. Now we need a motion to go into closed session. Councillor George? I'll make a motion to go into closed session. Thanks for that motion. Anyone opposed to that motion to go into closed session? And the motion's carried and we're in closed session.